Excuse us. Pardon me, ma'am. Sorry, sorry. Move it, asshole. Oh, thank God. We got good seats. Damn right we did. What's up? We got the drinks. We got the popcorn. And the candy. I think we're ready, man. Hey, guys. Sorry I'm late. The bathroom here is nuts. Oh, my God. You made it. Yay. It's about time, Nathan. Damn. Shh. The movie's starting. Stop. Look. And listen. <laughs> it's Nathan Simmons. And I've killed again. <laughs> <laughs> and I am Mally Moore, and this is the Silver Linings Playlist, a podcast where I will start off on my back heels immediately because I am the only one of us that actually vaguely enjoyed this film. Literally <laughs> at all. <laughs> yeah, this is wow. Wow. We got to oh, we got to set some records straight here. Our hype dies tonight. <laughs> Our hype dies tonight. I don't think I've ever been more wrong about a movie ever. And I I, I want to cry. I want to cry out bad. But see, here's uh, right off the bat so when we did halloween 2018 that was something mally kept saying to us on and off air was if they can pull this off it'll mm -hmm. be really interesting if. and i see mm -hmm. the thing that frustrates me the most about this film is that i see the interesting movie buried in it i also <laughs> yes. feel like it is a this feels like a skit <sighs> that's been pulled out for an hour and 45 minutes they're this is a filler episode. <laughs> yes, like, so this, I remember reading the script, and obviously I, I don't have the exact shooting draft. I have an earlier draft. Yeah. And I remember being like, okay, if they just, like, adjust this a little bit, you know, maybe lose this dialogue, something like this. Yeah. It'll be so rad. Right, mm -hmm. right. And instead, they added more of the bad parts. Yeah. Right. You, you were telling me it's, like, all the stuff that feels like unearned trailer moments mm -hmm. yes yeah also horrible editing in this film Why? I'm sorry. oh my the... god oh my god the editing atrocious it's clear that they, they were like all right ends is the movie we really care about right this we just gotta we gotta get through it to get to ends. Well, it's the hobbit of it all right yes. like this was originally supposed to be two movies and then they're yeah. like fuck okay we made a bunch of money too much cgi <laughs> too much cgi <laughs> there was an orc in there somewhere um and then and you don't you don't need to bring orlando bloom back yeah. there's no reason to have him in this no anyway. why was orlando bloom in this movie i, I was confused know. i just don't know i don't know why he was skateboarding on an actual skateboard this time <laughs> down the stairs but i'm just like i i like i'm i'm sorry like casting orlando bloom in his legolas wig as loomis mm -hmm. weird what an interesting choice it's very it takes me out of the movie yeah um so halloween kills we're about a month away sure from when it was re released <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah so i guess we can finally nail it down right halloween kills it's literally because there are so many fucking kills in this movie well, yeah and i guess uh halloween has been infected by grief yeah and halloween is a killer yeah. even though nothing's happened to this town in the yeah. last 40 years but sure <laughs> and, and the reason i say that too is because this movie has the highest body count of any Halloween movie. Yeah. Even the Rob Zombie ones, which is bananas to me. Even five, which has a yes. whole scene where Michael just runs people over with a car. Yeah. yeah. Can you guys guess how many people die in this movie? Either at Michael's hands or not. 26. Eight. Uh, let's split the difference. We're all 27. Ah. Okay. I got 27. Yeah. And can you guys, let's go ahead and do it to get this out of the way now. An even higher number. Can you guys guess how many times the phrase evil dies tonight is said? In the Four movie? billion. Four. <laughs> well, we don't have we haven't introduced him yet, but let guess the guest that, that's waiting in the wings. Hey, anyways. Yeah. Hey, I'm JT. Um, yeah. So <laughs> anyway, moving on, JT. <laughs> Our resident Halloween casual viewer. Yes. God yeah. damn it. Yeah. Guy who's seen some Halloween movies. Yes. Yeah. A few. Guy who knows about Halloween a little bit. <laughs> we yeah. have to keep downgrading you. He's vaguely aware of of the franchise <laughs> are, are you gonna one dollar this shit uh jt with how many times they say it? bold i forgot what everybody else said uh, oh i heard four billion come from something <laughs> that was me i said a hundred four i think mm. i'm going to say 80 87 mm. well you guys are real close uh i counted 28 oh, oh i'm not kidding that's, that's including like the chance that's, though that includes the chance that's so so basically so basically one for every kill basically yeah. that's that's the halloween kills of it all every eva dies tonight psych they should have every time someone died they should have yelled you know big john dies tonight <laughs> cameron <laughs> dies tonight yeah. oh my god i'm so sad about those god. characters yeah but let's yeah. let's stay on course let's not jump ahead Yet. Yep. Yes, because we we cannot. This cannot be another three-hour episode. <laughs> yeah, I, we can't. <laughs> no, because first off, I am gonna read 
line for line the original script okay. from the beginning. <laughs> Everyone strap in. So, <laughs> superimpose Haddonfield, Illinois, October 31st, 2018. <laughs> Total blackness. Exterior. Michael's house. <laughs> Actually, they never establish where the first scene takes place. There's no... Well, it is just a street. Yeah. It's just a, the, the street. Could be yours. It could be yours. Yeah. Well, no, I'm saying in the script, there is no exterior <laughs> wherever. It's okay. hilarious. All right. Well, I, I'm not actually going to read this script. Before we get too far into the weeds, uh, let's talk about the show. Listen, if this is your first time listening, this is the Silver Linings playlist. We like to watch movies such as Halloween Kills or... Let me rephrase that. No, we like to we like to watch movies <laughs> such, <laughs> such as Halloween Kills, uh, whether we like them or not. And uh, they're movies that typically don't end in a nice little uh, happily ever after. This mm -hmm. movie, notwithstanding, right? <laughs> what a what an abrupt ending to a movie. But anyways, we'll get there when we get there. Um, and we like to find the good in them, if possible. The the beacon of hope, the you know the titular silver lining, the yeah. upbeat positive thing to take away from it. Uh, and we're not good at it. I'll just go ahead and tell you now, don't lower your expectations, much like I did, you know, about halfway through this movie, the first time I saw it. So I think we can skip how we uh, all are familiar with this movie, because <laughs> if you heard the last Halloween episode we did, right. we spent most of that episode talking about this movie and we hadn't seen it. So <laughs> let's do a count. How many times have we all seen it? I've seen it three now. Same. Two and a half. Okay. Uh, th Yeah, two and a half. No, three and a half. Three and a half. Okay. Gotta one up everybody all the time. Jesus. Well, <laughs> I saw this the day it opened. I went to a mat I went to a matinee because I had the day off from work. Mm -hmm. Um I had a I was in a play that was opening that night, and it just felt like this is gonna be like treat yourself day. Like mm -hmm. ease into your day. Give this is gonna be a treat for myself. Halloween treat. Was it? <laughs> and, and instead I ended up just texting Mally's ass after the movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, treat yourself. Instead I was greeted with a, a inexplicable ghost song. <laughs> yeah. No, I I I felt bad because, you know, you guys had already seen it and then after I got out of theaters, my first response to you after seeing it was I fucking hate it. <laughs> right. Which it's not fair. I don't hate it. No. That the fact that that was my first reaction, I felt, and I know Mally said this is taking it too far. I felt very similar how I came out of this movie as I did when I came out of Last Jedi. When I was like, "Wow, oh. you bite your fucking tongue." <laughs> I well, I texted Mally and I was I just said it was almost verbatim what I said to Josh when I left Halloween 2018. I was like. I got to sit with it, man. Yeah. I, I, I don't I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I don't know that I'm going to come around on this one. Mm -hmm. I was sitting in the theater as the credits rolled. And I just remember be, I was alone in the theater. Everyone else had left like this was opening night. You were waiting for Nick Fury to show up. <laughs> yeah. And I out loud just said to myself, huh? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That That's an app just like reaction. That should be on the box art when the Blu-ray comes out. Huh. <laughs> My dad called me as I was leaving the theater and he was like, so how was Halloween kills? And I was like, hey, we don't, we don't have to talk about that right now. <laughs> <laughs> how, how are you? How was your evening? <laughs> Tell me about your new job. You probably made the better choice. <laughs> well, first off father, there were no dicks in it. There's not a no, single no dick. dicks. Yeah. No, there, no, is. there is a dick. There, there is. is a dick in this oh, movie. Well, yeah, there is a dick. There is a, a dick. Dead one. Yeah. Wait, what? There's a dead person's dick in this movie. Yeah, Dr. Sartain, you didn't see that 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 hunk of man meat in the mm -hmm. background there? I guess I missed it. <laughs> Look like a limp piece of macaroni. <laughs> and there's no there's no peanut butter in this entire not, film. Not a, that, you know what? That's the biggest sin of this movie. Yeah. Big John and Little John, instead of eating honey, should have been eating peanut butter. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's right there. You had a whole like charcuterie board set up. Yeah. Of just peanut butter. <laughs> should have been peanut butter. <laughs> Just swaps the peanut guys. Butter. It was a meta. It was a metaphorical peanut butter. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. a spiritual peanut butter. I'm not gonna lie. I was looking for any any hint of like maybe peanut butter candy, mm -hmm. trick or treating, and something mm -hmm. just so I can bring this up. Well, I think the real peanut butter is the friends we made along the way. Yeah, you shut the fuck up. <laughs> that's all I got. That's that's why y'all bring. <laughs> that's why y'all keep asking me back, right? I do think. I think I sp when when Lindsay pours out the Halloween candy, I think I spotted a Reese cup. Okay. Oh, there you go. Okay. Right. Yeah. I nope. haven't gone in frame by frame. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and jump in to who stars in the movie, how much it made, all the goodies, all the Halloween treats, if you will, mm. for Halloween Kills. So the, the year is this year, 2021. How about that? The director is uh, David Gordon Green, same director as uh, the last Halloween entry. 
The movie stars uh, Jamie Lee Curtis, Judy Greer, Andy Matichek, Will Patton, mm-hmm. Thomas Mann, Anthony Michael Hall himself, mm-hmm. Kyle Richards, Nancy Stevens, Charles Cyphers, Nick Castle, and James Jude Courtney. I like how Nick Castle's credited, but he doesn't once appear in the film uh, yeah his his scenes cut I th- yeah he just does the breathing right yeah he's just the breathing yeah they did cut his one scene i gotta say james jude courtney is really good i mean we, yeah. we talked about it in 2018 he's still really good as the shape oh yeah and shout out the guy because he, james did not play him in the 1978 flashbacks right yeah the guy who, who plays him because that guy was fantastic the stunt the stunt coordinator um aiden armstrong i think is his name A- aaron armstrong aaron yes and yeah. dude oh he's great he is he was great he's very good I, you know what he he kind of reminded me it was like a nice synthesis between uh how nick castle plays the shape and the kind of weird um like stance that dick warlock has as the yeah, show yeah, a little also, bit. like he, he i don't know he, it's sort of zombie like but i love it yeah um the movie had a budget of 20 million dollars and so far because it's you know it's still in theaters and streaming on peacock right now <laughs> uh has managed to gross 255 million dollars worldwide it is crushing it yeah. it's a certified fucking hit guys halloween does kill yeah fucking kills well and i gotta say the fact that this released on peacock as well and it's doing those numbers yeah. is insane to me doesn't that just mean that no one wants to sign up for peacock <laughs> yes <laughs> well there's that there is that but also like that's a testament to how much people wanted to see this in the theater yeah. which yeah. was me like i could have watched i you know, I told you guys I had to see it on Saturday. It came right. out on a Thursday, and I'm like, I I could watch it right now, but I don't want to. I want to see this on the big screen. Yeah, and uh, I contributed to that for sure. But unfortunately, what doesn't kill, yeah, is this uh, Rotten Tomato score, which currently, as the last I looked, is a forty percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Hell yeah. Oh, bummer. 9% higher than Halloween 2. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Well, which Halloween 2? Which one are we talking about? Are we talking about Rob Zombie's Halloween 2? The fact that we have to talk No, about... I'm talking about the original. Yeah, yeah, I'm I talking know. about the original Halloween 2. Are you talking about Halloween Town 2, the Calabar's <laughs> Revenge? Yes. <laughs> Like, I, I cannot <laughs> emphasize this enough. This is still rated higher by critics and audiences than sure, the original sure. Halloween 2, so suck a dick, DC. Well, you know, yeah, I mean, we, we've we seen a lot of awful things happen in this country. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fuck you. I, I still would rather watch the OG Halloween 2 than this one again. Is, is this when Nathan goes on his sad rant about something that happened? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can you imagine what if I already have a sad story from the last time we recorded? We've, we've arrived at that cliche already. All right, well, we? hold on one second. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> anyway, so as I sat there in my own blood, no, I'm kidding. I, I don't have any sad memories attached to this other than I was just underwhelmed seeing it. Nathan got his first period during this movie. I did. <laughs> yep. He's running around the theater showing people and they're throwing tampons at him. It's not it's not a good sight. It's like the projectionist yelled, plug it up. <laughs> oh my Jesus God. Christ. For the, for the Carrie fans in the audience. Uh, well, guys, speaking of also underwhelming, let's watch this trailer, which... Now, having seen the movie, is very underwhelming to me. So, here we go. That house burns down so fast. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Well, she made it out of matches. (laughs) Of course. (laughs) Well, someone on Reddit made a good point about this whole thing is, as well-prepared as she was for Michael, she didn't anticipate the fire truck coming to put the fire out do you think that guy's okay i hope so oh he's fine absolutely fine yeah he'll be all right he's fine okay he's fine this guy's fine fine (laughs) yeah it's 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 there's 27 near deaths in this film yes that's what they don't show you. All of the people in this movie actually live. They yeah. get to rushed to the hospital. Yeah. They're just sleeping. Get <laughs> the fucking dude with the water hose. I will say, as someone who grew up with a father who was a firefighter for like 25 years, mm-hmm. that water hose scene really bothers me. Yeah. I lost it at the guy trying. <laughs> that shit would have knocked him on his ass. Oh, yeah. It should have rocketed him back through the door. Oh, yeah. 
But if you look, the water pressure is not even going for real. Like, I noticed yeah. that. It's not. It's just like a sprinkler. No, yeah. He's... And I can tell. I can tell the firefighter also realizes that, but doesn't know what to do at this point. He's like, I just got a fucking water hose. I don't know what to do. It usually doesn't drizzle like this. <laughs> Performance <laughs> issues. It happens to all of us. Halloween drizzles. <laughs> I know this is kind of controversial. I dig the the violin version of the so Halloween theme in this trailer. I, the, the best part about this movie is the music. Yeah, he hasn't lost it. The score is great. The score in this rules. Although the score at the very last scene is weird. The more he kills, the more he is seeing. <laughs> <The more laughs> <Daniel Craig. laughs> he is the essence of evil. They also changed this shot right here. Yep. Come and get it. I'm coming for wow. Michael. And then the shot we didn't get. Oh, that's a shot we've never seen. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about that shot at the end of the episode. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I, I, I've done some reading on that. Shut up, JT. <laughs> Shut up and listen. <laughs> yeah. You know who else did his own research? Tommy Doyle. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. This film's Tommy Doyle would have been at January 6th, oh, right? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, let's 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 get into it. Yeah. So I think it's telling that the like you talk about this being a middle chapter of filler. I think it's telling that the log line for this movie, as posted on IMDb, uh, is just as lazy as this film feels. Oh, boy. And that log line is literally just the saga of Michael Myers and Laurie Strode continues in the next thrilling chapter of the Halloween series. Period. That's oh, it. Oh, big okay. if true. It continues. That's the log line. Yeah. I mean, that's like, Ugh. that's R slash technically the truth. Yes. Yeah, I guess. It's another movie where Laurie Strode lies in a hospital bed for most of the runtime. Yeah, time. I was, I was going to ask, which is a better movie of Laurie just posted up in a hospital, this or the OG2? <laughs> well, I think... At the very least, Lori has uh, more agency in this one than she doesn't have, which is my biggest beef with Halloween 2 is that Lori becomes a non-character yeah. in that movie. At least she's doing something, though, in that movie. She gets to do some things. She's trying her best. She is. She gets up and gets saved by Loomis immediately. She didn't do a goddamn thing in that yeah. one. She got out of the hospital and she tried to get a car going. Well, in this one, she stands up and inexplicably screams and shoves a syringe into her leg for no reason. <laughs> yeah, that's you don't have to do that to give yourself a shot. How do you get wait, hang on, how do you guys wake up in the morning? God. <laughs> there's a note. I got notes on that. Also <laughs> How do you guys start podcasts? L Lori gets out of bed, knees a dude in the balls, and then goes right back to bed. Yeah, because she has like her <laughs> intestines are hanging out of her stomach. Sure, but that's all you're giving this character to do. I mean, this Lori is in this movie about as much as the flashbacks in the seventies. Yeah. Well, by the way, my <laughs> first note is that young uh, Officer Hawkins looks like Pete Holmes. Yes, a little bit. yes, I wrote that down too. Tom, I, Thomas Mann, <laughs> fine actor, but yeah, He's he great. is definitely young Pete Holmes. He is. One of my first notes is, guys, I'm so happy that Hawkins survived. Yeah, I am too. I, I do not believe he survived that shit. I don't believe it for a second, but I, I, I'm glad it happened. I just didn't no, I'm believe it. I'm back. I just don't believe that shit yeah. whatsoever. Sure. I mean, we saw it. I mean, he gets stabbed in the neck. It's fine. Uh, couple of times and then his leg gets ran over yeah but i mean we also we also establish in the first movie that sartain is terrible at everything this so is he's probably a bad murderer like we we don't see him get stabbed the second time we just see sartain raise the knife and th like put it back down so maybe he's stabbing the pavement <laughs> yeah no that yeah. and then it's time for sartain to do some cosplay <laughs> like that motherfucker probably missed the second time well let's be honest i think it would be better if he just wasn't able to really talk that well in this movie because like you get stabbed in the jugular a couple of times i at least want you being a horse he wasn't stabbed in the jugular it was the side <laughs> it did give him a little more of an accent too did you guys he notice did yeah. like, so, okay, he stabbed in the throat <laughs> He, it, well, it made him like it made him like sound like he's from the Bayou, <laughs> yeah, <this movie. laughs> the Louisiana Bayou, a little bit. And then I love how like when Hawkins gets wheeled in though, and uh, 
you know, she's the nurse about to give him a shot for pain. She's all like making a double. My buddy Chris is like, uh, do you want him to overdose? <laughs> <laughs> My buddy's like, yeah, ma'am, we can't fucking do that. Yeah, I was going to say, you can't just ask for a like more of the drugs. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think the nurse fucking did it. No, uh, no but it's hilarious because it is. Funny. Uh, it's a cute line. I, I like that line. So do I. I'm with Nathan on this one. When Lori sh- uh, shot herself with the uh, shot to make the pain go away. or mm-hmm. Chris was like, uh, that's like 12 cc's of that. Like, that's not going to she should be walking in zigzags. And I was like, how funny would it be is the conversation where she's yelling, saying evil dies tonight. We got to go find him that like she starts drooling and like <laughs> the sound gets all disoriented. And like <laughs> she's like, she's like Will Ferrell in old school. That would be, that would be yeah, fucking can... amazing, actually. <laughs> the voices get deeper. Evil <laughs> dies tonight. Right. Oh, no. But she she sounds she sounds like Ted Levine. Is that what we're <laughs> Is Michael a great big fat person? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, that nurse is for sure getting fired, right? For leaving behind those, leaving those drugs. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> make it a double. Leave the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> so. I got. I have a question that I don't think the movie ever answers. Um, who is who is David? Huh? Hmm? Does anyone know who David is? David. Because Cameron straight up says, David! Oh, who is David? <laughs> he said, damn it. I know he says, damn it, but it sounds like he says, David. I was like, who the fuck is David? It, I guess I can hear it. They're like, who's David? Yeah. That, that's Deborah David. had a name. Yeah, Deborah had a name. <laughs> isn't, that the, isn't that the director? I, I love, I will say, I really dig... Uh, a lot of the 1978 stuff. There's oh. some really cheesy stuff, it's but I think it's done best. well. I love, I love all of the it. 78 stuff. It's like 90 to 95 percent there. Yeah, I agree. I don't think Thomas Mann is a great young Will Patton. Like he's the he sticks out so much in this flashback stuff that I don't like it that much. Really? Yeah, I just I don't buy his character. I think he's too goofy compared to everyone else who's like if they feel more like they're from the 70s, he feels like he's from the 2020s that's I guess. how i see it anyway other than that though yeah i mean for for me i was just really i i get really into uh recreations of sets and stuff like i think that the the rebuilt myers house complete with the broken window upstairs is done really well mm-hmm. oh for sure and those bloody footprints as goofy as they are i'm just like that's 100 percent something carpenter would have put oh, yeah. <laughs> into a movie like guaranteed it's great i do love how that one cop drives up to the kids that are picking on lonnie yep. yes Te- yep. he's like he's like Jesus. hey there's a crazy murder on the loose Peels the fuck out. Peels yep. out. Peels the fuck out. Just leaves him. Gone. <laughs> get, yeah, get the fuck. Yeah. Which is also very realistic. And I was like, that's my that's my favorite character in this movie. He said, <laughs> fuck them kids. <laughs> he's playing the long game. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I don't know if y'all noticed, but as he's as he's peeling out, there's another kid that's trick-or-treating. <laughs> two, two things here. The cop doesn't fucking tell that kid. He just keeps going. <laughs> that's his kid. <laughs> that kid's gone. <laughs> Next, that kid's costume. I don't know what it is. It's just a bunch of fucking balloons on them. Just oh, yeah. I missed that, done. really? <laughs> it's just a bunch of different colored balloons. I have no idea what they were going as. Yeah, this movie has got some weird stuff with balloons, because it also the very first shot is a bunch of balloons. Yeah, and I'm like, bro. are we doing a Pennywise crossover? Is that what we're doing here? Um, but yeah, no, the cop does not do his job very well by just leaving those kids there. That's what you get when you mess with the Mulaney's. <laughs> uh, that got a good laugh out of me. <laughs> did Yeah, did anyone else think like... A Doyle rules. Oh yeah, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. I thought that. Oh man. <laughs> Let's talk. Should we talk about Loomis? Yeah, we can talk about Loomis. Oh, I was so excited. I think it's done really well. It's good. I was in the theater like when I read the script. I was like, how the fuck are they going to do that? Yeah. And in the me in the theater, I was like, how the fuck did they do that? Mm-hmm. I could not figure it out. I I gasped and put my hand over my mouth, and it was so weird, like coming out of the theater and seeing how many people. Because I will say. I I know that there's been a lot of like negative responses to this movie and some of them are people looking for things that I I, that aren't accurate. Mm -hmm. Like there was a whole lot of people bitching about CGI Loomis and it's not CGI. Like it's no CGI whatsoever. I think that I can tell that like I I, it's not a perfect one to one Donald Pleasance, but it's done really well and it feels real close. Yeah, Yeah. it's really close. It is literally the construction coordinator for the film. (laughs) Yep. Yeah, their art director, right? Yeah. Oh, wow. I think um, the physical acting 
like the physical performance of that guy as Loomis is great. Yes. I think the voice acting is a little over the top because I can overlook it though. Yeah, no, for sure. Well, it's it's the same guy from H2O. No, it's it's the guy from uh, 2018. What did I say? H2O. I know. <laughs> he comes in and he says, did Michael kill again? Yeah. And I'm like, mm, did Michael kill again? It's a little, it's a little on the like impressionist side. Well, and that, that voice, that voice worked for me when it was pure voiceover in 2018. But yes. when I'm watching it come out of a human's mouth, it's, yes. it's very odd. I agree. <laughs> yes. No, like I, when I kind of had a similar reaction as Nathan, like when they're upstairs or whatever, and then I, you hear cars pulling up and I hear his voice and I was like, oh. Oh well, yeah, that was they, good. They got, they got. I thought I was. A, I was thinking, you know, they got a voice actor like they did for 2018. The, yeah, there's a whole lot of shots of people's feet, and I was like, okay, I, I, this, yeah, I guess right. that's all they can do for us. And then I was genuinely thrilled yeah. to see it on screen. See, like when Hawkins at the top of the stairs and seeing the tan trench coat running in yeah. i was yep. like oh my god yeah oh and my then god, they-, they doubled down because i i was like oh okay well that's that looks amazing of course they're not gonna d-. and then they do a close-up and i'm like oh fuck yeah, so yeah. They, the close-up like i fell out of my fucking seat yes. yeah they did a really it's good job great and again here's why i say this this flashback is almost there it's not quite there's a couple of editing choices and we talked about mm-hmm. the weird and cinematography too like this is almost perfectly shot for the 70s. Like, it feels like Carpenter uh, directed some of these shots, almost. Yes. Even the extra grain yes. and, like, the, the, the light, how the light reflects on the lens. Like, I, yeah, there's some stuff that I, it's perfect. The lighting is great. So, again, my buddy Chris, who's watching this with me, he's never seen the original. Oh, wow. He's like, are these shots from the original movie? I was like... No, he's like, they even like put grain on it and stuff. Like, yeah, it's yeah. Like, it looks really looks, good. Like the moment it cuts to that shot of like Hawkins running down the street and says like Haddonfield 1978. I was like, oh, shit. Yeah, yes. yeah me too. Me too. I gasped in the theater. Yeah, it's great. And again, I knew it was happening. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is a weird thing to brag about because I mean, I'm sure they made millions, you know, or I want to say that, but the original mask that they used mm-hmm. or the, the mask, the new mask they made for the old flag flashbacks looks fantastic it looks good it is phenomenal it's the closest they've ever gotten yeah yeah Yeah. i mean like like i said this is almost there the parts that i don't really enjoy is Uh i i think it's too much of a wink wink nudge nudge when the other officer is looking out the window and has to have the line had and failed where nothing exciting ever happens oh yeah he says it again yeah i have to i have something (laughs) Because the order there is just not right. Yeah. Okay, so he walks up to the window. Mm-hmm. All right. For some reason, he knows there's a killer on the loose and this is where he lives. So he lets his guard down, walks up to the window. He yep. looks down and sees the looks footprints. Looks down and sees the footprints. Yep. And then says the line. Yeah. Okay, yep. so let's imagine if you, first off, not let your guard down. But yeah. the, the order here, you walk up to the window, say the line, then look down, yes. see the footprints, then get attacked. Yes. Like, I was like, well, wait. This guy and, and young Hawkins are not great at their jobs because no. when they walk in, you know, they immediately split up and then the the cop that ends up getting shot goes around one corner and then is about to blow Frank's face off. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Like, and he's like, oh, it's me. <laughs> like, well, and it's funny you say that, Dustin, because in the script, they do not split up. Good. They shouldn't. And <laughs> that line of him, like him seeing the footprints is not in the script. Him saying that line, not in the script. Good. Like, again, guys, the script, really good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I believe it. But then there's a couple other things here. I do like that we get to see the dead dog, like, finally. With, yeah. I mean, that's made mention in the original. Uh, at last. <laughs> love that. Yeah. Been looking forward to that. <laughs> yeah. I love I love the joke there, though. It's like, yeah. hey, there's a dead dog. What? Nothing. Yeah. <laughs> I got a good laugh out of that. <laughs> there's a lot of uh, mirror between them two and Allison and Cameron. Oh, yeah, yeah for when sure. When they go through. Yeah. Yes, because of this closet under the stairs. Yes. Did anybody else realize this? What is going on with this closet? I don't know. It's a spooky closet. Everybody's afraid of it. Yeah, I don't get that neither. But yeah, well, the the second the second time I get it, if all the lights are yeah. off and there's one little candle. Yeah, sure. Yeah. But also, Allison, d- the door is like still opening and she blasts away <laughs> that pumpkin. That's- <laughs> so anyways, I started blasting. Uh, no, dude, if, if I'm like, if I'm in a house looking for Michael Myers, and a door creaks open i'm shooting the fuck out of it yeah. but it's cameron opening the door <laughs> he's like <laughs> trying to they're trying to do like the thing of i'll open the door you shoot to be honest i'm probably gonna fucking shoot cameron too 
<laughs> I'm, I, I'm sure he'd prefer that over what he got. Yeah. Yeah, yeah for we'll sure. We'll discuss that. Yeah. There's also, we I guess we kind of skipped over it a little bit, but young Lonnie seeing Michael. Um, why doesn't Michael kill him here? I think because the police were coming down the street. And so he just, yeah. and, uh, and he sees the house and he just dips into the house. Well, I think he's, I think he's trying to get home. I yeah, think okay. he, and he's literally ends up being right across the street. And also this movie establishes that Michael can move like a motherfucker when he wants to. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> when no one's looking. Like he bolts out at the, at that cop. <laughs> uh, no, this mother, this motherfucker rolled the dice and was like plus 100 to jumping out of closet speed yes. <laughs> he does yeah. it a few times at a breakneck pace he put all his uh points into acrobatics yeah yes <laughs> yep. like i jumped when he jumped out of the closet in the 78 house yeah, yeah me too oh, yeah that was great but then so we have um Lonnie looking right down the barrel of the camera and saying the boogeyman, which I got a good laugh out of me. <laughs> that seemed kind of forced. I, I didn't. I liked it. Yeah. Again, not in the script. And I felt like the whole thing with Lonnie was just a forced backstory. To... It, it, it's a way to it's a way to reframe him. Yeah. Yeah. As a as a likable character to make him a legacy character. Yeah. To make him a little bit more of a bitch. <laughs> they have to make it like all these people saw Michael that night and lived. Yeah. Yep. So you know, another thing too is when the cops are all pulling up, and then one guy's like, "It's him," and then they cut to another cop, and I'm Michael like, Myers. Yeah. And then they punch in on him again to have a second line. And I'm like, this is what I'm talking about. These little moments that they just smooth these out. Yeah. yeah that was. That was pretty. But he says Michael Myers, and they put like an effect over him, like Jim Davis, and I think you should leave. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like... <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, and then there's like that close up of that one cop that looks looks suspiciously like Nick Cave. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. I clocked that. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, he does. They nailed this final shot of the flashback oh, yep. mirroring the opening. Like the slow zoom out is great mm -hmm. it's great with everyone just kind of frozen and in, in awe yes and loomis in the doorway yeah i loved it like his like the mirror shot with like kind of like with his parents when he was a kid with the yep. clown costume exactly because yeah. i picked that up and i was all like no one i went to this movie with is gonna understand why that's really cool to me <laughs> nope <laughs> nope and then but like, here's the thing so i'm at this point in the theater and i'm like Okay, it was a little bit of a rocky start, but this is this just sold me. I'm fucking in now. Same. Like, and then this theme song rules. Oh my oh, god! The opening like Carpenter and the boys outdid themselves with this score. They with did the, with the little choral arrangement. Like, I I love that shit. Did anyone feel like it was a little faster than normal for it the is. opening credits? Okay, uh, it slightly. does feel like it's like this it feels like it's the opening of like a tv show this time it's like and hey, we come on we gotta hurry and get through this <laughs> like the west world opening credits are longer <laughs> it's to represent the pace of the movie yeah, yeah. <laughs> then we get we get to the bar did anyone else notice that the sign outside says open mic night yeah, yeah. <laughs> does it say open mic <laughs> mm -hmm. well, that was pretty funny i like that um if i love it when i go to a bar and people are mad that people are having fun <laughs> yep same <laughs> yep same i go to the bar to have my peace and quiet <laughs> Yeah. yeah, to get to get be quiet and talk about how mean my boss is. Yeah. Yeah. And and see a talent show that is also not a talent show, really. Uh, or at least uh Tommy has no fucking clue what a talent show is. Yeah. Yo. Um, I'm not I'm here to tell a story. <laughs> I'm not here to do my bird whistling or what the fuck I'd, ever. I'm I'd here rather to... <laughs> I'd rather listen to his bird whistling to be completely honest. Nah, for, for Tommy sure. feels like kind of an asshole. <laughs> well, well it, it, it Tommy feels like the guy who like lived in a town where something bad happened and that's his five minutes of fame you know mm -hmm. it's like it's like that um that david cross bit where he's like do you think on september 11th that like the guy who works at that casino with the fake world trade center felt it just a little bit harder mm -hmm. like that's what he acts like it's just like <laughs> he's like been he's been telling this story about something that happened to his babysitter years ago yeah. as though he's the hero for surviving it. And it's weird that he keeps putting a fucking, he puts a spotlight on each of these people. Yeah. And it's just like, here's why she was traumatized. Here's why this person's upset. Yeah. Here's everyone's trauma. Let me bring it up real quick <laughs> on the night that it happened. Yeah. Every, <laughs> everything he says, every time he, he talks, it's just so fucking cringe I, I don't know man like i think anthony michael hall is great though yeah i'm not saying it's him can i read his speech from the script sure yeah. yes please yeah, yeah well wait is it is it different yes okay go ahead my name's tommy doyle and, and i'm, I'm here, here to say, say i'm scared <laughs> really bad on halloween day <laughs> so first off this like this is weird but like there's a little scene with like lonnie and marion and Lindsay before okay and tommy's not with them does it explain why they're friends with marion <laughs> nope yeah okay. for real not at all um, um, okay, so Tommy, 
40 years ago to this day, my life was changed forever, as were the lives of others, some in this very room. Some of you might have forgot, some of you might not even know who Michael Myers is, but he changed this town from just your average small safe suburban town to something larger than life in ways so many people couldn't possibly imagine. Hmm. I used to call him the boogeyman, not because I was an eight-year-old kid who didn't know that monsters didn't exist. I used to call him that because that's what he was, the definition of a monster, evil. I just want to dedicate tonight to the people he took away, to remember them not as the victims of Michael fucking Myers, but as the people we'll always tribute this night to, as well as them, let's raise a drink to the ones who survived and the ones he didn't take. And then it cuts to Lori. Okay. That's so much better. I, I like the second half of that. Yeah. yeah. I like the second half of that a lot. It's still better than what's in the fucking movie. Yeah. I still reject the premise that Michael has been constantly terrorizing this town for 40 years. Yeah. Now, let's let's keep in mind, he's been constantly terrorizing it, but no one knows what he fucking no looks like. No one knows like. what he looks like. No one knows. He hasn't constantly been terrorizing it. He did it one night 40 years ago. Yes. And as far as they know, they don't know what else has happened in the 2018 one which isn't to say that the the survivors shouldn't feel this pain yes. but like there he even tommy acknowledges like half the people in this room are too young to give a shit or mm -hmm. like never heard about it mm -hmm. and so you like you can't have it both ways you, you, he can't be a guy that like ruined everyone's lives even before they were born and a guy that no one fucking knows what he looks like even after his face is on the news <laughs> yes they do that later too with the kids that break into big john and little john's house sure. like, do you know whose house this was nope michael myers never heard of him he stabbed his sister in the tits <laughs> uh, you know what i i fucking love that guy uh, that's my favorite line in the movie yeah. <laughs> yeah hey no there's there's no issue with any big and little john scenes no nope. all of that's perfect the jo guys the johns are possibly my favorite characters in the franchise now. hands yeah. down uh it's it's up there for sure it's definitely like up they're there. up there with like rachel from halloween 4 yeah <laughs> young michael's stepfather in <laughs> rob zombie the problem with this this tommy scene as an introduction is it doesn't make me like the character of tommy Fuck mostly no. because it this the editing of this scene is all over the place he gets maybe four words out and then we got to cut yeah and then we got to cut and it, it's it's like a music video yeah like there's no less than a hundred cuts in this one scene alone it also makes him unlikable in that he gives this speech about this awful thing that happened and then immediately goes and posts up at the bar because he knows people will buy him shots mm -hmm. hey free shots though <laughs> <laughs> it may not be tonight or next halloween but the boogeyman's coming for me and he's coming for you i'm uh -huh. just like shut the fuck up <laughs> oh yeah and that's the other thing is it it does there is a hopefulness to the the speech that mally just read and this one is just like fuck everything <laughs> yeah yeah the one in the script was like hey i'm not some of them are in this room tonight yeah i'm not i'm not special i'm yeah well it's very um it's very foreshadowing of the movies nihil like this is the most nihilistic slasher movie i think i've ever seen 100 percent. like it's there's no hope anywhere like at least at least mainstream wise yeah yeah like i i don't know this movie just felt so cruel at times it feels like trauma porn yeah like we we have a scene we have the we, we have those speeches we have judy greer cleaning her wedding band and then like sobbing on camera we watch oscar's mom find her dead son's body oscar's mom does not need to be in this movie at all we watch we watch Lori's operation like yeah. i there's just so much of this movie that i'm just like god damn it like fucking relax <laughs> we saw the sheriff sitting on the stairs wondering yeah. what the fuck just happened i like that moment a lot actually <laughs> i i do like that karen and karen and allison finally get to like mourn ray because yes. they, i mean it happened so quickly at the end of the last one but yeah, this I don't need to see Oscar's mom at all. And I'm not saying horror movies shouldn't be upsetting, but there is like the the execution here just mostly doesn't work for me. Well, there's a scene coming up here in a moment that we're going to talk about that is the pinnacle of of how I feel about this movie. Okay. Yeah. So we get you know they they're like oh here's to Lori wherever she may be, and then we get a cut to them in the back of the truck, which I think is a great cut. That's yeah. A great moment. Fantastic cut. It's, yeah, it's very good. Um, and then we get the scene that I wish we didn't get almost the entire thing of in the trailer because it kind of was a letdown when i saw it in the theater i was like oh that's the entire scene oh the firefighter yeah um uh, but i will say michael's appearance in this movie is incredible oh yeah coming up behind those blast door shutters oh, oh yeah yeah holy shit he looks like the stay puff marshmallow man after they beat him yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well 
That was, I mean, I, th- I think we all kind of had that concern that when we find out, we found out that 2018 was going to have a sequel. It's like, well, how the fuck does he survive? I mean, yeah. we don't see him in that final shot of 2018, but it's I like. I think that last, sh- that shot of him pulling up the shutters and the quick, like, jump cut to his face uh-huh. and the firefighter saying, holy shit. Like, I love that moment. Yeah, it's so good. Oh, yeah. It's scary as fuck. Fuck. Oh yeah. yeah. But it's also ingenious of like yeah. here's how Michael survived. It's so simple. It's so simple. And it's he so doesn't simple. get out unscathed because yeah. he looks he's like goopy for the rest of the movie. He's a toasty <laughs> he's a toasty marshmallow. He is crispy in this film. Yeah. I mean, look at that poster. He is he is a he, he put you put Michael on the edge of a stick and you put it over a campfire for just a few seconds, and that's what he looks like. Delicious. <laughs> oh, yeah. Motherfucker out here looking like a s'mores the whole time. I also appreciate that these firefighters immediately decide to fucking kill him. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. They fucking axed up. They don't immediately, because the first guy, we got to talk about this guy whose plan is, let me just hose him down a little bit. <laughs> right. That was gut instinct, bro. He's He was like, he's still on fire. Fuck. That was just his training kicking in. Yeah. <laughs> Gotta do my job. Oh, <laughs> Imagine you go to fight a fire and the fire starts sending out soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> that's like, that's what that's, that guy is trying to process in the moment God, right there. The fire has reinforcements. It's the fire's defense mechanism. I am legitimately going to ask my dad what he would have done in that situation. Yeah. Like, hey, so you're fighting a fire. Yes. And it sends someone out to murder you. <laughs> Gut reaction, go. Yeah, you you rev up your bone saw that you all have, right? <laughs> bone saw is ready. <laughs> the bone saw is ready. They could have sold this entire movie based on this scene, which I guess they kind of did with the trailer, but yeah. like did Michael with a halogen bar, like holy shit. Good shit. It's great. Yes, that's what they're called. Yes. I forgot what they were called. I had to look it up because I'm an idiot. <laughs> you fucking dorks. I like the POV stab. I think that's good. really good. Yeah. Um uh, this whole this this sequence works for me more or less. I think I still think Michael's a little too spry. Yeah. I'm here for it, man. But it's good. Picking up a guy like impaling him and just lifting his entire body up that's a great shot i think that rules it is a great shot but that is a baller fucking move yeah Yeah. now i will say michael has so many like come at me bro moments in this fucking movie yes he does so many he might as well have been casey jones the way he like (laughs) like taps it against his hand like yeah yeah. well it felt more like this is like a jason scene to me sure i don't know it this 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 Michael feels a way too sh- like he kills more people in this scene than he does in the entirety of the original movie. This is an aggro Michael for Very. sure, but he's had a bad night. <laughs> he's doing his best. He's doing his best. Yeah, let's remember, guys. These are the Halloween kills. Yep, these are the Halloween kills. I think my uh, and this is I think this is a movie thing more than just this movie thing. But let's all fight them one at a time. One of us will get them. Yeah, crux of this entire movie. They do that so many times that's a big issue in so many fucking movies yeah but this one especially yeah, yeah it, it's funny because my buddy <laughs> my buddy chris or like and we'll get to it later but he michael's laying there and he's like someone there right now has a gun yeah like they know that right like yeah. and we're we're just looking at him we're gonna have a conversation about it yeah. <laughs> yeah i want someone to edit this michael into the knife store scene from john wick three <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, is this the screenwriter's curse of like having a bunch of people go up against one, the against the villain? They all have to attack one at a time. Like, is there? I would have never made that choice. You I, know what I mean? Like, I mean, the raid two has that great scene where it's just the the bathroom stall is breaking apart because there's like forty guys trying to kill him. Well, I mean, like you have like something like Marvel's Daredevil where it's like one guy versus a bunch, and sure. that feels more real. But when you literally have them all crowd around him, yeah, Michael should have been dressed as Daredevil. I get it. Yeah, he should have had a blindfold on. Well. And and also, again, I'm going to keep referencing the script. The <laughs> script makes it clear that... Oh, the script makes it clear. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> that shocked me. You went full SpongeBob me, <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, it's like, it's no, just another example of the script being better than what we got. Because the script literally, like, like, they're not all just standing in a fucking line. Yeah. yeah. Like, it, they're all he, literally sa- <laughs> he literally says, like, steps off the front porch making his way to the firefighter that is nearest to him oh that's fucking cool i think that's an editing thing it's it's really kind of hard to tell where everyone is i mean it shows them straight up in a line in front of them next to each other that's true you're right i was like cut out that shot and it's fine yeah Yeah. and yeah because i mean it'd be it'd be sick as fuck as they're all you know going to him 
if by the time each one of them gets to him at different times, he's just already killed that one. Yeah, yeah. And that's kind of how it reads, yeah. like what JT just said. Yeah. What if this is like, like Haddonfield has their own crew that goes out with firefighters. They have like Meyer fighters. Like they have, <laughs> like this is a guy, this is their team that they send out. It's a utility. Meyer fighters. Oh my God. Can we copyright that? Yeah. <laughs> it's a utility. Like you got water, you got police, you got electricity, you got the Meyer squad. Uh, yeah. I need that on a t-shirt. Meyer fighters. Fighters. My- <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of stuff from Halloween 2 in here. Like I think the I think if you're going to repurpose footage, this one does it in a smart way. It is interesting because I bet a lot of people don't realize that's from the second movie. Like right. people that are casual fans of this franchise. I loved it. I when I saw it, I was like, holy shit, they're doing it. They're keeping this stuff in. I love it. For the <laughs> listeners, what move or what shot? from Halloween. Oh, it's the shot of Brackett seeing Annie. Annie dead on the gurney. Yeah. Because this, this is where my next note comes in where we get we finally do get to the hospital and I'm like man, they had to drag Sheriff Brackett back into this, didn't they? He gets nothing to do. He got to say his one line. He gets uh, one of the I worst know. moments of the movie to do later on. <laughs> I hate that moment so much. I agree. So bad. I'm a sucker for an it's not my blood scene. Like I, any time that pops up in a movie, I'm just like, yeah, that's it's, yeah. I just rewatched. I know what you did last summer. And I was like, yeah, always good. Fuck. Yeah. But then this is we get to the scene that I was saying earlier, like is the pinnacle of why this movie just doesn't work for me. Mm. Um, it's the scene with the older couple. Oh, Lenny Clark and uh, yeah, Diva. Oh, what's her name? But yeah, the 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 gravekeeper from the first movie. Yes. Diva Tyler. The reason I, I don't really enjoy this movie is it doesn't ever really feel fun to me like no. other horror movies are like because we get this older couple right and i think the drone gag is good and scampy <laughs> i was gonna say michael getting real scampy throwing this drone and, and michael really said shut those fucking lights off yeah. <laughs> i don't want to be seen in the I light do, i think that shot is both funny and terrifying okay. yeah, oh, absolutely terrifying i like to i like to imagine like michael's walking in right to like i'm gonna use this person's bathroom i guess i don't know i gotta t- i gotta roll i gotta roll up my hand yeah i gotta yeah and that's the sh- that's the scene where they cut out uh nick castle's shot oh, right. Oh, like, no. was the drone thing yeah like apparently the the camera was supposed to follow like the drone in mm-hmm. and you just catch a quick glimpse of michael in the mirror Ooh. and then it shows the drone getting thrown out i love that but they cut out they they cut out the shot that's interesting so they would have put nick castle in a mirror shot again too yeah <laughs> wow it's in his contract just add that to his resume <laughs> it's in his contract the last mirror fighter <laughs> <laughs> jesus christ <laughs> but i like to imagine he's walking in and then he doesn't hear anything doesn't know what's going on and then the drone crashes into the door frame next to him and actually scares him like a, he's like oh, you just want to see my go just, jesus <laughs> <laughs> so he just picks it up and throws it back out they've invented magic in the the last 40 years well here's what he should have done he should have got the the remote mm-hmm. the, the, he kills the old guy then he gets the remote from the drone just ta- duct tapes a knife duct tapes a knife to it and then drives the drone and <laughs> chops her head off oh my <laughs> god that would have been amazing no that's going to be in the child's play for or chucky versus chucky versus michael yeah that that's very child's play i kind of want to see a movie that's just kind of like the beginning of captain america winter soldier where it's just <laughs> michael myers <laughs> adapting to like sure getting like be like missing the past 40 years like yeah. he's a little note. listening to trouble man and <laughs> yeah <laughs> like catching up on star wars the Beatles. <laughs> here's the thing i don't like about this though is you know you've got michael you know he's in the bathroom he breaks the light like you said he kills the old guy and i'm like okay he it's very brutal killing that old dude. And then he goes in the, the kitchen. This old woman, I get it. You're you're scared. And that's why she kind of freezes up. But I'm yeah. like, you have so much time to get out of there. Lady. Yeah. yeah. That being said, taking the fluorescent tube, breaking it. That's Oof. already horrific. Yeah. But then he just he, he kind of it's almost like butter. Like he just casually slides that thing right through her neck. Like, yeah, <laughs> it sure does. Yeah. And it fills up, too. Which, again, another come at me bro moment where yeah. she like has the knife and he just kind of like looks at her, looks at the light. And just and he's like, okay. takes it. Yeah. But also, I, I wish I didn't see this death in the fucking trailer. Yeah. Like, I, I didn't need to see the end result of it. Even Chris was like, man, that's kind of fucked up because as she's laying there, like bleeding out, he's playing arts and crafts with her husband's body. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. It's it's so fucking cruel. It's so fucking cruel that she's still alive. And going back to Mally's joke about Michael like adapting, like <laughs> coming in back into society. Uh huh. It, it seems like a again when Hawk is like it's a six year old trapped in a some bullshit. I hate that line. Oh my god, wrapped in a a burrito of a of an enigma. There. He, the, <laughs> the, the, the husband's dying, like he's already dead. Oh, he's yeah. dead. But he drags him into the kitchen to throw him on the island. 
and just starts taking the knives and just stick. Okay. I love it. I don't get this scene. I don't get it. Mally, was it you? Was it you telling me that you felt like he was just testing which knife would work best? Well, yes. yeah, I said that. Oh, that's what it was. Okay. <laughs> he stabs him, looks back at the knives, hmm. grabs another one, looks at it. There's got to be a better one. Stabs him. Yeah, that's what I thought. I thought he was testing out the aerodynamics of the knife. I wish he had smacked Lenny Clark on the ass and be like, you can fit so many knives in this bad boy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I thought in the movies, I was like, oh, okay, he's testing out which one he wants to take. And then he just takes the last one and walks out I'm like what the fuck doesn't even try it yeah yeah i was like what the fuck was the point of that and doesn't even you doesn't even use it well again though michael is always a big arts and crafts guy he always has been he loves them that's the scampiest that's the scampiest michael's ever been to me this whole scene oh no i think <laughs> I think there's a scampier bit in the coming up. But oh, yeah. I, I will say the scampiest bit that Michael's ever had was throwing that fucking jack-o'-lantern in the, in the, in the, uh, in the uh, aquarium. Fish aquarium. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, hands down. But, but then we cut to the scariest shot of the movie, which is the ventriloquist. Oh, yes, my God. Terrifying. I don't fuck with ventriloquists. Uh, there's actually a cut scene oh. that I don't know if they shot it. But after he, like, grabs his knife and walks away, yeah. he stops looks down at his like missing fingers mm -hmm. oh. and then it cuts to michael in the bathroom grabbing like bandaging his hand i'm uh, glad we didn't that. see that yeah I, mean, I don't need that <laughs> and i'm so happy we didn't see that like we do see his hand bandaged later but i don't i don't need to see <laughs> he, michael tending to his wounds he comes out with electrical tape like eric draven and the crow <laughs> <laughs> oh no we get like a scene like um What's his name from No Country for Old Men when he has to oh, go into sure. the pharmacy, get the drugs, go to the hotel room? He, he does the whole, we watch the whole thing. Look, I'm not saying Javier Bardem shouldn't have played Michael Myers, but I'm here for it. <laughs> With the same haircut that Anton Trigger has. <laughs> you just you just see, uh, like, burn cream on the outside of the mask. <laughs> like... <laughs> <laughs> and a little and a little like and a little dinosaur band-aid for where where karen shot him oh yeah absolutely the devil's ointment yeah this whole scene with the old couple though is like this is more of a rob zombie scene like i don't understand why this this is in the movie it feels like well and that was that was one of my issues with the zombie movies uh particularly the theatrical cut of two where there's so many times where it just feels like oh okay we're gonna cut to michael killing ken foray now and yeah. then go back to another thing and then yeah it just yeah it feels like a weird violent travelogue yeah, <laughs> yeah i don't a, get it for a lot of the movie well i think they wanted to give a location like in the like writing i can tell because the husband talked about Oh, it smells like smoke, but right. the wife's like, no, that's Lori's house. That means they're at least in eyesight. Yeah. 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 And then Lonnie figures it out later because yeah. he's like, oh, here's where he, he's attacked and he came here. And OK, yeah. so he just killed all those firefighters. Now he's walking his way. Right. It's a it's like a murderous GPS. <laughs> <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. But then we get a character that I like, but I feel like is the most useless one so far in these new movies. The sheriff. Yeah. Um, At Lori's house as it's burnt down. He gets, you know, he sees all the dead bodies. Yeah. And then you got the other cop saying, you know, there's a, a mass murderer on the loose. His name is Michael Myers. And the sheriff having a realization moment of like, oh, shit. Like, I could have stopped this or yes. I could have done something earlier. Which is great. Yeah. But then he does nothing throughout. The, right. Like when, when the crowd starts rioting at the hospital. He just looks bemused. He's watching. Tommy is publicly, in, publicly inciting a riot and says he's going to murder somebody. And he does nothing. Yeah. He just stares at him. And I do think. I think Omar Dorsey delivers a very like measured and interesting performance with a nothing part. Mm -hmm. I I love this character, but he does nothing. Yeah, he's he's useless. So you're saying it's the same thing that the people in charge did earlier this year? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Very. Uh, this is a very political movie. If you guys weren't aware, it actually <laughs> kind of is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is. But it's it keeps interrupting itself before it makes its points. I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. It gets in its own way. Yeah. Um. And it, 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 it doesn't help that Tommy Doyle just reeks. I did my own research. Energy. <laughs> like, mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Well, then we got we cut back to Tommy Doyle at the bar because this is when the uh, news announcement happened. We get a, a Bob Odenkirk cameo for those who don't know. <laughs> right. Uh, fuck that. We get the most important cameo. Our boy, our boy fucking Julian. Oh, Julian. Sure. Julian is back. <laughs> yep. That little asshole kid from across the street. She was my number one favorite babysitter. <laughs> by the way, by the way. Uh, I owe Dustin an apology. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Please, please on, go ahead. Let me. <clears throat> on live mm. recording, Dustin, I am sorry. Mm-hmm. <gasps> 
Mm-hmm. That is not Julian's parents. <laughs> yes, thank you. Okay. Because <laughs> I had a feeling. I was like, I don't think that's the case. But yeah, so this, we get confirmation that is not Julian's parents. <laughs> you see parents leaving. There's a big... Ba- okay. I, yeah, yeah, I thought they were because of that tracking, that, that one from the first movie. But mm-hmm. I, yeah, I guess they had the, the geography all fucked up. Well, I mean, not really. I mean, it's on their street, so it's pretty close. But uh, yeah. but Julian was found. You yeah. know, he's just not out there wandering the streets. Could he use more Julian in this movie? Guys, I, hope he- it, I really hope he he comes back in Halloween. I hope he ends Michael. Gosh, I am yes. praying he comes back for ends. I hope he's the one that kills him. What if he's just the Tommy of that movie? He's like 40 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> or, or he's like, they got him in, like surrounded again and he's on the ground and they're all like talking or whatever and then Julian walks up and pulls the trigger. He's like, the fuck y'all talking for? Like, yeah. it's over. Like, yeah, I love it. Shoot this motherfucker in the It just cuts to, it just cuts to Lori and like Hawkins looking at each other. Like, he shoves his nasty ass toenails in Michael's face. I was going to say, I was going to say, he, he pulls a gun out. He's like, hey, Michael, everyone's entitled to some nasty ass toenails. And then pulls the trigger. <laughs> How were the runes stopped him? <laughs> uh, but yeah, we, we get, um, I, I I so when we when I found, finally saw this movie and saw I was like doing my research like seeing what everyone else thought about it. Yeah. Um there was a great oh, you did your own research? Yeah, I did my own research. <laughs> okay. There's a great there's a great thread on Reddit about somebody who saw the test screening of this movie before they made a bunch of changes to it. Uh-huh. And one of the things they said that not having seen the theatrical version is that they they added a bunch of weird zooms in the movie there's so many weirds and i didn't there's so many i feel like i didn't (laughs) really catch that in the theater watching it at home it was like Mm -hmm. especially the last five minutes it's constant like crazy zooms well and you can like and dustin like i mean you're you work in post so i know you can tell but like Mm -hmm. it's obvious they were added in post too. oh yeah no this is yeah they try to play it off like it's handheld like they did it with because they add like a slight motion sway to it while they're zooming in to make you think oh no we really did this sometimes yeah but then the problem with zooms is you get pixelation yeah and it's very obvious here i mean they do a shallow depth of field every time so you don't notice it i did i i watched this on peacock uh today and whenever i would at one point i actually unpaused it during a zoom and i thought the app was fucking up like you know that thing where sometimes (laughs) like the image like Uh like bumps up when you press play Mm -hmm. yeah it was really weird i do love this shot of everyone suddenly getting texts and calls in the bar oh it's good so we get the other guy that we saw in the um, Umbrella Man. The Umbrella Man. Uh, um, his name is Lance Tavoli. Oh, Tamo- yeah, Tavoli. That's right. Is that the character name or the actor? No, that is the character's name. Okay, okay so Lance. The actor is Ross Bacon. Oh, that's a great <laughs> that's name. That's better. That's a really good name. It's a good fucking name. <laughs> so Lance and Michael we see on the TV. And then I mentioned it. Yeah, Bob Odenkirk, and Kurt because they show all the... Uh, the victims of the 1978 attack mm-hmm. and they couldn't track down the actor who played bob there to get mm-hmm. like a, a high school photo of him to put in there so they just used a picture of bob odenkirk which i thought was great it's pretty <laughs> good i actually like this couple a lot the the doctor and the nurse and it's funny that they're actually swapped it's cute the husband is an actual nurse and then she is an actual doctor yeah <laughs> that's, that's one of their cute little jokes mm-hmm but she's great. I love that she checks the back seat. Yes. A little too late. Okay, but does anyone else check their back seat when they get in the car at night? Oh, I do. Absolutely. All the time. Absolutely. Yeah. Like it's funny uh, the past so like 2 weeks ago like all of ha- like all of the week leading to Halloween, mm-hmm. I a friend of mine like was out of town mm-hmm. and I had to go like check on his cat every night. Yeah. And I never realized this until that week that his cat was Michael Myers. <laughs> yeah, no, dude, he lives on a street that it like it looks like a Haddonfield street. Mm-hmm. Oh wow! And like that, um, because the temperature had dropped very rapidly, it caused a lot of fog. Mm-hmm. And so, like every night going to that house at like midnight, oh. it was like pitch black, silent, foggy, just like glimmers of like halloween decorations in the background i was like i'm gonna get fucking murdered (laughs) it was legitimately terrifying i I love that this woman she's like michael myers in the back seat and then she just bolts yeah Yeah. (laughs) and then the husband's like oh no i'm not checking that out she says like she says go get him or go check it out yeah Mm -hmm. (laughs) and he's like fuck no (laughs) yeah that's great i love i love these two uh i think they're so funny but then you get Tommy uh, just assigned it to steal a baseball bat, an heirloom to yeah. this bar owner. Old Huckleberry. I fucking love the bartender. This bar owner, is is he an actor? 
Because this bar owner feels like he's just a guy that works at a bar. And I thought the same thing. Whose friend is he? <laughs> yeah, he feels genuine. Yeah. I don't, he's genuine as fuck. <laughs> no, I, yeah, I enjoyed him quite a bit. Yeah. They're friends with that crazy lady. Yeah. Uh, that crazy lady that almost got killed. <laughs> but yeah, then the whole bar goes out into the car. And the problem I have with this is, I mean, we don't know at this point that it's not Michael. Right. But as soon as you hear the radio and it's playing Figaro, Figaro, and I'm like, oh, right. this is definitely not Michael. So it's it's the other guy. But it's not the Figaro guy. It's, it's not. not. from the first movie. It's not the Figaro guy. That's the problem. I think that's how they, to let you, the viewers know who are paying attention, that yeah, it's definitely not. Right. I think that's them making a mistake and forgetting which guy was the Figaro guy from the first movie. But also, like, does that mean that that song was, like, queued up yeah. on? Spotify or like like they were already listening to that they yeah. were well I mean the tension is gone then in this scene yes. as soon yep. as I hear that I'm like oh well it's not Michael oh well now this is just a hilarious bit of uh, mistaken identity yeah. but I do wish they didn't have that scene right after the news broadcast to where sure. it showed both of them yeah it could have done one of the other 30 times we've been to this bar previously in this movie exactly we get maybe the greatest character introduction of all time big john holy shit the goblins will get you if you don't watch out i looked up this song after because i thoroughly enjoyed it yeah, yeah hang on real real quick um after lance i still can't get over the fact that his name's fucking lance lance <laughs> um <laughs> drives off and crashes the car did you guys notice i didn't notice till this rewatch another hint as to who it is, is when Tommy opens the door, there's a white umbrella in the passenger seat. Yep. Oh, I missed that. The, yeah. the nurse even, the lady opens it up and spins it. Yeah. yeah. The other the other big hint is when it then immediately cuts to him to remove any kind of tension to show that it wasn't Michael Myers. Yeah, and then he him whimpering as he runs down the street, like, hey, hey. <laughs> And see, again, that's, um, I know JT fucking hates I keep, I keep doing this, but that's another difference in the script. God. We don't know who that is until right before he dies wow yeah or sorry it's sorry sorry it's it's when karen finds him see that makes way more sense yeah. why show a bunch of people look at a guy who's clearly not fucking michael myers and then all of them decide it's him we'll talk about that because i got some notes <laughs> i know i don't want to jump ahead but like no, in the movie you. it's very clear Tommy sees who's who's who they are chasing. Yes. Yep. In the script, it they it's pretty clear that the main little core group don't see who it is. They're right. just like, yeah. Michael's here, fuck, get him, go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Just uh. look at this guy's body shape and hair and <laughs> just look at them. Yeah, just, just look at them. Look at them. <laughs> I'll look at him, JT. What what, do you, what about looking at just, him? Just, just look, look at, at him. him. <laughs> this he look it, it, he could just be an old Say something. <laughs> Oswald Cobblepot. He could be he a is, penguin. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, just look at him. Just look yeah, at him. Just looking at him. We had Max Shrek on the show recently. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we cut to Big John. Big John rules. Scott MacArthur fucking is cl steadily climbing his way to one of my favorite working actors right now. I I 100% agree. Have you got you guys have all seen El Camino, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. He's yeah. fucking terrifying in El Camino. Yes. It's so fucking good. He's he's excellent in this and he's so like He's lovable as shit. This little dance scene is so good. The the edit, I actually love the the little quick cuts during his little dance. I think those are great. It, oh, no, it's it's fantastically like, directed and I love Michael McDonald too, yes. who I haven't seen in a while. Yeah, right. But it's great that he's here. The only actor who's been killed by Mike Myers and, and Michael, Michael Myers. Myers. Yes. yes. <laughs> get that get that man like a trophy of some sort. No kidding, right? <laughs> he deserves like a lifetime achievement award just for that. Well, it'd be more of a death time achievement. Ew. But I I mean the character names, Big John and Little John, great character names. I mean, it doesn't get any better. We get another reference to Halloween 2 with the razor blade and the candy, yeah. which I thought was pretty funny. Yeah, that's true. There's there's the blade. It's in the barf. Yeah. It's so, so goofy. I don't know about you guys, but if, if I even if I got scared by these kids and they like, ah, we tricked you. And I saw a little kid walking out of my house. Yeah. I'd beat the shit out of that kid. Don't you ever go in my fucking house. Oh, yeah. Um, what is the, the, the kid who steals the candy has maybe the worst line delivery in the film? I got the whole bag. He, no, he goes, <laughs> I got the whole bag yeah. like he's <laughs> <laughs> well he gets his head cut off later he so sure I guess does that, yeah <laughs> he sure does silver shamrock masks yeah, yeah. <laughs> we keep big john talking about uh michael stabbing his sister in the tits and that one girl going ew <laughs> i love yeah. that line ew. I, he goes he stabbed his sister in the tits in the tits <laughs> yeah it's great they scare him off oh 
I do want to note in the script they are not big and little John. Oh. Uh-huh. They are big rog and little rog. Mm. Rog or Raj? I it I don't know if it's supposed to be Raj, but I'm reading it as rog cuz <laughs> that's funnier. Yeah. Big rod. It's big rod, little rod. And then he <laughs> then Michael parks his big kitchen knife right in little rog. <laughs> yep. Which, uh, dude, okay, I'm sorry. Getting stabbed in the armpit. Oh, uh, oh, fuck no. That's a sensitive area. Yeah. That is a sensitive area. That looks that looks like it hurts. Yeah. What 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 would you rather have happen first? The eye gouging or the armpit? If you had mm. to do one and then the other. Eye gouging. No, fuck it. Gouge my goddamn eyes out. Leave my armpit alone. Because you probably wouldn't even notice the armpit after that. Maybe you'll hit a maybe you'll hit a nerve yeah. and I won't feel the next thing. <laughs> yeah, the eye gouging. Fuck, it's rough. Yeah. That's always is a rough fucking death. Ooh. You know what's also rough is that this hospital leaves windows open so everyone can just see naked corpses. That's my next note. <laughs> That's, my, That's too. my next note. What the fuck? Yes. <laughs> okay. So the whole Sartain thing, I, the, when I first saw that, I was like, shouldn't this be in a basement? Yeah. Or like, is there windows? There should at least not be open. There should be blinds on the window. <laughs> yeah. And Chris, who is interning in a hospital, he's like, yeah, it needs, it's most of the time they're in a basement. They do have windows, but... Right. It's not just wide open like that. No. It wouldn't be on the main floor. Yeah. You know what I mean? They yeah. Passed the, they just passed dead bodies in a mob, like, rushing up the stairs. Like, mm-hmm. And that's how Oscar's mom sees Oscar's body. Poor Oscar's mom. Exactly. I'm like... Yeah. Sees her dead, naked son with his face torn apart. Yeah, sees her son's, his, her son's dick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And as Mally <laughs> pointed out, Dr. Sartain's place of death is listed as Turkey. Yep. Yeah. I don't know why. That's such... Why? Um, I like Allison's reaction to finding out that Michael's still alive. It's just a what? Yeah, the cut. Yeah. I, dude, I love that. I love... I hate the editing in this movie, but it has a few good cuts, and that's one of them. That's, that's a good cut comedic moment i like the i like the dueling interrogation scene yes yeah. Yeah. and and i and this this is the thing that i think maybe my favorite thing about the movie and it ties back into our conversation from 2018 is that they learn it's not about Lori. Yes. It was never about Lori. I love it. It takes Will Patton an hour and a half to finally say that to Lori. In but, this movie. but Allison figures it out immediately. Yeah. Because she's just like, well, no, he wasn't going there. But don't they kind of flop it back and forth? Don't it, it seems like they flop back and forth with that. Like go like Well, Karen is insistent for some reason that Michael is coming to, to the, the hospital. hospital. Yeah. I don't know Maybe why. Maybe because her entire life that Lori traumatize her and thinking that's what's going to happen yes and now that she knows that michaels exists no this he's coming for her yeah yeah i, I agree i guess i think i think jt fucking nailed it just right mm-hmm. there i think that's true well i wish they would have made that more clear <laughs> in the fucking movie well she was passed out she just had surgery dustin <laughs> again i think uh karen is very thinly written and yeah. and Ju- judy greer is putting everything she can into the performance she's trying she's doing her best mm-hmm. she's doing her best i actually have do have something positive to say i will say the one thing i really like about this movie is um we don't get a huge fight mm-hmm. between cameron and allison when they finally meet up again yeah it's it's just let's take care of business yeah i agree i love that yeah there's other shit going on yeah i mean the movie smartly has them realize the gravity of the situation yeah. and they put it all aside like the whole you kissed a tiger <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. They put that shit ah uh, yes they put that shit to the side and they're like okay let's let's do the shit yeah the the most memorable scene that we all remember <laughs> everybody knows that Cameron goes through this entire movie in a skirt. Yeah. Credit where credit's due. Yeah. That's a great point. And hopefully still heels, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, don't, I don't know. Do they ever cut down to the heels? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I don't know. No, I actually did notice he is wearing boots. Oh, okay. That's dope. <laughs> he has got boots. He puts a hoodie on. Still in a skirt. He's, he's dressed like Mia Jovovich in uh, <laughs> Resident Evil. <laughs> Tommy Doyle's organizing groups. Groups of people that care. And groups that split up immediately. Yeah. This, this whole town shares one brain cell when it comes to tracking down Michael. I don't get it. They did their own research. <laughs> I guess. Smaller groups are more effective. <laughs> Tommy acts like he knows how Michael works because yeah. he's just like you gotta, you gotta, what you gotta think like him. Element of surprise. You go one way, he goes the other way, and I'm just like, you saw him through a hallway one time. Michael doesn't surprise people. This man is trying to pull a Kansas sh- City shuffle on Michael Myers. Like, yeah. he goes right, we go left. <laughs> he's trying to do the old okie doke yeah he's the old okie doke yeah he's trying well also what if laurie rolled over in bed and onto the knife that allison leaves next to her 
<laughs> and then just cuts her stitches open and she bleeds out. And that's the end of Lori. Oh. Yeah. It was all part of Michael's master plan. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, bold move. Yeah. God. Not as bad as her resurrection death, still. Fair point. Well, here so okay, Tommy's plan is we're gonna go after him as a group but with all little tiny groups yeah three of us at a time and then we get one of the most confusing parts to me is you got marion Lindsay, and this doctor and nurse duo that i don't think we ever get their character names but they, they say it i just can't remember it's, it's like one time they say their names uh marcus and vanessa that sounds nice. right okay that sounds right um, well, they're just riding down the street, and then Lindsay just goes, what's that? Look. And she gets out of the car, and I'm like, what are you doing? Did you already forget what the plan is? Like, but right before, I will say, right before this, we get the most Kenny Powers line in the whole movie, which oh is when Lonnie... Lonnie opens up his trunk and goes, how about this sassy tackle? Oh, that's <laughs> yeah. true. See all of his and guns. Then, and then Tommy's like, you got permits for these? He goes, somewhere. Some, Some of them. them. It's... It, <laughs> I love that interaction. I also, yeah. I like the little moments like, you know, uh, Cameron running over and saying, hi, Mr. Doyle. And Tommy saying, hey, how's it going? Yeah. Like, giving him a little hug. Like it's, there's familiarity there. And I think that that stuff's really great. Yes, that is good. I was talking to Dustin about this after the movie. Uh, at Lonnie's character. I, I absolutely, out of the legacy characters, what I'm called, like the return. I think Robert Longstreet is really good in this. He's he really fucking it. good. He's the best. He's the best out of the legacies. Because the parts, the, the, the when he, discovers the kills we're about to talk about i'm sure yeah the halloween kills the halloween kills <laughs> yeah okay the, yeah. Ha- the season of the witch kills in this case <laughs> that's right True. <laughs> he's genuinely upset like oh, you yeah. just tell it sure. oh when he goes tommy what the fuck yeah, <laughs> yeah that's good oh, i like that that was a good line. tommy's like uh lonnie that's marion yep he doesn't give a fuck i don't know it's lonnie does a great job yeah. adult lonnie he does a fantastic he's he's good he's good He's good. Another script thing I want to point out, Lindsay and that group mm-hmm. are not like part of the mob hunting Michael. Oh, mm-hmm. interesting. Again, they I don't know why they cut this out. Like they are literally going home. Oh. Like Tommy tells Lindsay, go home, get out of here, go be safe. And they are literally just giving a ride to Marcus and Vanessa. Wow. Mm. Like taking them home. That okay. makes more sense to me. And like, you know, and Lindsay stops because she sees these three kids. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, okay. Th- that does make more sense then. <laughs> Cause I was like, why, why does it, what, what, what benefit does it serve for Lindsay to get out and go by herself when one of the characters has a fucking gun yeah. and she goes out with a flashlight? I love when Marion shoots that head on the windshield. I, made me laugh out loud oh when she shoots the mask yes. yes which let's be clear michael murdered that fucking child he cut the fucking kid's head off yeah <laughs> does he i just thought he had the bloody mask yeah no, no it's, that's it's a head. No, the, the kids the kids say that's a mask but it's dripping from the bottom yeah. it's it is it is just a bloody mask he, but he cut that kid's head off for sure oh no that kid's dead as all fuck that shot though uh when she's like oh there he is and it turns and it's him behind the car, bloody mask. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah, I wish it was a little closer. It's scary. That shit was good looking. Yeah. It's good. I like it from Lindsay's point of view, where it's she just sees him far away and mm-hmm. then she realizes, oh shit. Yep. But I do, and then the tail lights mm-hmm. bathing him in red light. It's good. I will say, she wait. Lindsay wastes no time dumps the bag throws bricks in it yeah but then it takes her 20 minutes to get across yep. that park oh uh, this whole the editing of this whole scene is bananas it's ridiculous it's yeah okay so the moment she pulled up it's a, she's like what's that you know and i told chris like chris watch all the bad decisions that's about to happen in five minutes uh-huh and just it's just a domino effect of bullshit uh-huh. <laughs> well there's a couple of things First of all, Marion, get in the driver's seat as soon as you see Michael in the rearview mirror. Mm -hmm. Fuck that. Drive the fuck away. Second of all, she shoots the mask. She shoots out all the fucking windows. For some reason. Well, the reason is she's an 80-year-old woman with a fucking gun. (laughs) Yes, that's true. (laughs) At night. Well, no, Vanessa takes the fucking Desert Eagle hand cannon (laughs) bullshit that he had. Well, no, she she climbs out the window and lands on the ground. The next time we see her, she's coming from down the street. Like th- like four houses down. Yeah, that means she fucking ran. She left her husband. She started to leave and then just then changed her mind. She was honestly, she was the smartest one up until yeah. she came back. <laughs> sure. I I wanted one shot from Lindsay's point of view of Michael just crawling around on the roof of this car. Yeah. Like, oh my <laughs> fucking <hilarious. laughs> Look at this. <laughs> uh, they de- they shot. They definitely did at least one shot of that because there's BTS <laughs> photos of him just standing on top of the car. Awesome. It's goofy. 
It's got to look goofy as shit. I'm, the only thing I'm thinking of is the shot in <laughs> Jeepers Creepers where the yes, the, the, you know what I'm talking about, uh-huh. where he's killing the cops behind him while they're going down the highway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, I, I also God. really like that they pay homage to the first movie in the same way Michael breaks the window. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Is you've got the stunt man with the visible wrench yep. Yep. in yep. his palm. That's hilarious. I saw that this time. That was a interesting choice. It's hilarious. <laughs> Where last time in, in 2018, I thought the uh, references and the callbacks yeah, they they were cool, but there was a little too much, and it was kind of getting corny. This was a subtle enough in this movie that it did a they did a fantastic job. Uh, a couple times. It is weird that the references, for the most part. A few exceptions, definitely. Oh, yeah. yeah. Looking at you, Sheriff Brackett. Uh-huh. Yep, that's the one that I'm like, uh. But, so, like, yeah, I think JT's right. Like, the references are, like, a little more subtle. A little more subtle, part. for yeah, sure. It's mostly in, like, shot composition and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, speaking of references and, and homages and everything, yeah. I don't really like that a lot of the legacy characters get, like, very unceremonious deaths. Yeah. yeah. I feel like Mar- Marion's death should be way more impactful. Like, I would, I would even settle for just... Lindsay off in the distance screaming, Marion, no, or something. But like, uh, Marcus in the backseat, like, oh shit. Right. And I'm like, that's it? I just. <sighs> Marcus in the backseat doing nothing, nothing while she gets stabbed to death. Well, he. Okay, I will say he, he can't get out because it shows her locking the doors. Child safety locks are the death of us all. But the window shot out and Vanessa crawled out. He a big boy, though. He a big boy, though, DC. He ain't getting out that window. <laughs> yeah. That'd be like you trying to crawl out a window. <laughs> <laughs> I just still don't understand why Marion's there. Yeah. I just, I don't, I, I just, I, as much as I like that character, yeah. I, I just, yeah, I don't get the relationship. It's also upsetting that, she, that she's just like, this is for Dr. Loomis, click, click. And I'm like, <laughs> God damn it. But also, like, in what way? Like, what did he do to Dr. Loomis in this timeline? I guess other than she's just like, that he always said you were evil or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. It's just a, a, a that line means nothing to me in this timeline yeah yeah i that line is not good <laughs> to your point um jt about your friend being like does anyone have guns in this movie oh yeah a lot of people have guns they just don't know how to use them yeah <laughs> right yeah even chris was like uh you she's he's like uh you have a revolver what are you doing right. like literally count them six marion's just like blasting I, I just got the i just kept thinking about archer being like does nobody else count these like when you're <laughs> <laughs> sure yeah this vanessa's death got a great reaction in the theater. Mm. Wait, hang on. We gotta talk about Marcus's death. Oh, just getting yeah. stabbed in the fucking face. Up in the eye, in the upper eyelids. Oof. Oof. That one's fucking awesome. Yeah. That's it's and his he's he's got a good uh death, like a good reaction. Good yeah, reaction. good uh, sure. like death twitch. Love a good death twitch. <laughs> meanwhile, meanwhile, Lindsay's still loading up those bricks. Yeah. Still <laughs> getting those bricks. She's, she's screaming out, hold on, guys, one moment. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Be right with it. Yeah, yeah. But then Vanessa coming down the street. So she tries to shoot Michael. Michael kicks the door. Somehow that turns the gun around in her hand and she pulls the trigger and blows her own head off. <laughs> <laughs> my brother, my brother immediately looked at me during in the movie theater. He's like, that doesn't work that way. Yeah, no, <laughs> like, yeah for sure. I mean, the theater I was in was mixed of half laughter and half just, ooh. Oh, yeah, same. <laughs> we, dude, me and my, the whole theater, we fucking lost it. I cackled hysterically. <laughs> but I love how Michael claims, going back, okay, now we got to talk about Michael getting arts and crafts again. Because mm-hmm. he puts the mask on him. Mm-hmm. Does that imply that he killed the other two kids? Oh, probably. Because probably. Where else did he get these masks? Okay. Well, they left him by the swing set. I, yeah. I don't know. Well, yeah, I think they I think they just left them. Yeah, it could it's be possible. True. They did just run. But okay, that's where the candy comes in, because he like put them on the little spinny thing. Yep. Mm-hmm. The merry-go-round. Sprinkled sprinkled candy around the merry-go-round <laughs> to make it. He's such a dick. Like <laughs> put the mask on him. Let's put the nurse with the doctor. He crucifies Marion. Yeah, he puts Marion up on the swing set and under chains and everything. I'm like, Jesus, this is what I'm telling you. It's it's too brutal. Like there's not an ounce of blood really in the original. In this movie, holy shit. Well, if if you want to hear brutal would you like to hear how Vanessa's death originally was? Oh, sure, please. Boy. Yeah. So it, Michael wears her like a suit. <laughs> uh, like a Vanessa suit. <laughs> um, so <laughs> he, put my hands on my head. Like, like this. this. <laughs> <laughs> so 
Thank you, Nathan, Thank for you. jumping in with me on that one. You're <laughs> um, so instead of him kicking the door and her shooting herself, mm-hmm. he does kick the door open, mm-hmm. which as she's shooting, so it deflects the bullets and it bounces. So the oh. bullet hits off the door and then like so it's like a ricochet a ricochet yeah and like hits her in the leg or something and she falls i don't like that as much yeah she, hang oh hang on oh okay. it doesn't kill her it like hits her in the stomach or leg or something okay uh-huh. and she starts slowly crawling away across the road the shape approaches her she squeals as he lifts up her head by the scruff of her neck placing it against the curb. Oh, no. (laughs) He raises his foot. Oh, no. no. Oh, yes. In all capital letters, slam. He brings his foot down upon her head. Her neck smashes against the curb, broken. (laughs) Hell, yes. Her brain shit out. (laughs) It would have been, yeah, that would have just added on to the nihilism. I think the way they did it in the movie, it it does give you a a nice little chuckle. (laughs) It is, it is one of the best laughs. Big laugh. I, guys, the Lorian Hawkins scene, Mm -hmm. I think is next. Can I say one last thing about this? I think we get, because after he, look, he, you know, Vanessa gets shot. I think we get one too many head tilts from Michael in this movie. Yeah, I agree. Because he does it right here, too. Yeah, a little too many. Uh, yeah. Because he, he does it with the firefighter at the beginning, too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. The score in this movie fucking rules because it so ramps good. up right after this. There's a few parts I got in my notes where, like, the music... This is one of my favorite bits in the... Yeah, it's fantastic. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. Lindsay comes up, hits him a couple times with the bricks. Oh, yeah, what happens here? There's, there's a deleted scene, right? It has to because she... Gets choked out, right? No, she just hides, and Michael, for the first time, can't find somebody. But but then when they come back and find her later, I'm like, something happened. Me too, because I was... Yeah, she gets choked out. Yeah, she gets slammed up against the car, but she gets out. She runs. She hides. Mm-hmm. She's in shock. But no, when they find her, it looks like someone beat the shit out of yeah. her. Yes. Like, she is just bruised and bloody and dirty that's what i thought too i was like there's a missing scene uh but yeah no there's no deleted scene there that's how it's scripted that's fucking weird she tripped that's I what guess. it was Sean michael did this <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah so it's it's almost an hour into this movie before laurie gets an actual scene mm-hmm. and it's here i think it's good i think it's well acted i do think uh my one of my issues with this movie is that no one ever just says something. There's mm-hmm. so many fucking speeches in this movie. A lot of monologues. I think me and Nathan, when you and I were texting after you saw this, yeah. I think I don't remember which one of us, but we were just like everyone talks like Loomis. Mm-hmm. Yes, especially yes. Laurie and Hawkins. No one can ever just say like, "Hey, what do you think happened?" And they'd be like, "I don't know. It was really bad." Everyone's just like, "Let me tell you about the nature of evil <laughs> <Yeah>. since <laughs> the dawn of man. We've always been afraid of Michael Myers." Yep. Um. Did anybody else think that this scene was going to reveal that Hawkins was Karen's dad? Oh, <laughs> no, I didn't think about that at all. No, but I like that. I had this feel because I, I yeah, I actually don't hate that. I don't either. And I kind of almost hope it happens in the next one. Yeah, I do like that. And also, I got a good laugh of both when both of these old people are groaning in pain. I thought it was pretty loud. That was pretty, yeah, good. That no, was I pretty think, good. I think they're great together. I wanted them to have more screen time together in the first movie. And I, I think this is such a great human moment. And they bring back a uh, Ben Tramer. Yep. Yes. Yeah. How's Bill? How's, how's Ben Tramer? Yeah. <laughs> well, he's, I mean, he's not dead in this one. He's not dead this time. He's, he's not on, on fire. fire. <laughs> And I like that they connect them more as like a like he w- was fond of her and yeah. her, her the same because in the first movie it's more acquaintances. Yeah. yeah, I'm the law, you're a vigilante kind of thing. Yeah, so that that was nice. I also I actually like I like when Tommy comes in and tells her I'm gonna fucking kill him because yeah. you took you protected me. You're, yeah. you know, I I like that moment too. That's the one time where I really buy him. I like the idea of that oh yeah jt had a good good yes. review of no that. i do i do oh no jt tell him what you told me where you're like tommy has to get permission yeah it's like he's so <laughs> please can i can i go kill michael myos oh he no he's just a big misfits fan mommy <laughs> <laughs> I, kill tonight. I remember halloween 40 years ago <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. I just. I, no, that was great. But either way, he runs in. He's all like, Lori, I'm going to kill him, blah, blah, blah. Like, he. And then immediately, like, a little bit of dialogue. Then he just fucking runs out. He's like, Yeah, th- I'm going to go do what I've been doing the, re- this entire time. Hold yeah. up. Uh, I'll be back. <laughs> I got to go incite more people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just letting you know. I just want you to. I just want you to know what I'm doing. That's true. Well, th- we get uh, one of the scampiest parts of the movie for me is um, when they find 
Vanessa and Marcus mm-hmm. that the merry-go-round is spinning. I'm like, that means Michael stacked the bodies on it and then gave it just a little wee slow push. <laughs> <on the merry-go-round. laughs> Again, got Michael is a fucking artist. Yeah. Uh-huh. He is scampy. As, he's such an asshole. <laughs> he's, new movie. he's a real Jack Napier. <laughs> Wait, uh, going to... um. And again, we're going to get to this in a moment, but what he does with uh, Big John and Little John. Yep. Oh, yeah, he arranges them like their their photo. Yeah, it's adorable. <laughs> it, it is, because they killed, or he killed them in his sister's room, like their master bedroom. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They find them in the study, and the shot opens looking at that picture. Yeah, yeah he framed them just like that picture. He's such an asshole. <laughs> uh, reversed, fr- reversed from that picture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, reversed, but still, he... I don't know. He could tell, like, I don't know. Maybe he recognized that they were together and put some together like that. I don't know. It's very strange. I don't know if it's him being an asshole or him actually just. No, he's an asshole. <laughs> yes. It, all of it. Every, whatever answer you come up with. Yes. Yeah, he's an asshole. Yeah. But what I'm saying is he did. He didn't treat. He treated Big John and Little John way better than he's treated everybody else so far. That's after true. Death. Oh, yeah. That's true. It's very nice. It's very sweet. Because M- Michael's not homophobic at all. Well, because he they t- they took care of his home. Yeah. They did. They even put the uh, there's a the little vanity table is right where yep. Judith's vanity was in the original movie. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, he was just like, oh, I appreciate this. No, their interior decorating skills are on point. They showed Michael's legacy some respect. He's showing them respect yeah, after yeah. he brutally murders them. I love I love that Big John takes off his rings before he fights. Oh, yeah. God. He has to undress and we get a shot of the ring, the necklace and everything. The robe. So good. <laughs> it's so good. Yeah. You think like this dude's like a secret badass or something. Yeah. We just never knew. And then he picks up the little. I got this knife. He tits the tiniest knife. <laughs> the cheese knife. <laughs> Dude, they're so fucking good. They're it's, great. It's just flashes of greatness with these characters. Yeah. Knock on the front door. OK, remember the knock on the front on the back door? Mm-hmm. Little John opens it, knock on the front door. It, me, my brother, and my friend Jason, when he shuts the back door, all of us reached up our hands and twisted the lock, like lock it. Yeah. Lock like lock it. Yeah, lock it. Like that fucking door. Lock yes. the door, you piece of yeah, yeah. idiot. Lock the goddamn door. And then that's when he comes <laughs> back and is like, oh, someone's in our house and it's not a kid. Yeah. Yeah. And I love the Marco Polo. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. With Big John, Little John. Like, I thought that was sweet. Mm-hmm. Oh, we also get, that we kind of skipped a little bit of a scene, but when Tommy and all of them are kind of uh, regaling like what it was like back 40 years ago, I do like that we get a nod to the original Halloween. Sure. Where Lonnie confesses he never went into the Myers home. And I'm yeah. like, oh, yeah, it's because Loomis scared him off. <laughs> yeah, he never made it in. I love that. I also love uh, Lonnie has a line where he's talking to Allison and he says, you know, your dad used to sell me peyote, yeah. which, is, yep. which is the opposite yep. of what her dad said. <laughs> also, Allison in that scene, yeah. dude, the, Andy crushing it she's great oh it's good when she when she's last and then starts to cry it's great she's excellent yeah absolutely i'm really glad they're giving ray more respect because mm-hmm. i like, that, that was a complaint like their dad died and they just didn't say anything about it <laughs> the movie just keeps going yeah i can't believe i we don't have a single scene between michael and laurie in this movie nope i know it's it's ridiculous it's ridiculous let's get to the biggest problem i have with this movie oh boy the red herring of Lance, who is not Michael Myers, being hunted by the people who thinks he is Michael Myers. Oh, Lance. He walks into the hospital and someone immediately goes, that's him. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm like, why? Why? What? People have been coming into the fucking hospital all night. What are you talking about? <laughs> this place is full of people. I don't, I see what, like, I can get what they're trying to do because, you know, they're just like, that's him, the guy on the news, because they did show a guy on the fucking news. Yeah. And he is wearing Smith's Grove Sanitary, uh, the jumpsuit. Yes. Yeah. This just takes two too much time out of the movie it does it's it's so long it goes on for so long and especially the scene like the penultimate scene right before he leaps to his fucking death Mm -hmm. last like there is like he looks to his left locked doors look to his right locked doors slow-mo yeah look to the right slow-mo looks back to his left locked like they he looks left and right like six fucking times yeah. right i do think that the bit the scene between him and karen is done really well very it's good. good yeah but yeah I, the the lead up to it could have been i don't need that many shots of people running upstairs, upstairs. no yes. yeah there's one guy doing a weird little cackle like right before they come mm-hmm. around the court he's like yeah <laughs> like it's the weirdest thing what an asshole i i appreciate that the movie is trying to say something about mom mentality yes i agree but it, it's 
it's also dumb that they're trying to make a movie like it feels like the message is trying to be something along the lines of no we're the real monsters look what we did to this innocent man yeah but i'm like mm, well michael is there literally is a serial a killer yeah exactly it's i think it's the wrong <laughs> movie for that well and also look I, I i maybe this is answered in the original script or the novelization but uh <laughs> There's a reason why Lance was in the same facility as Michael fucking Myers, right? Yes. Yeah, we're not, we don't know what he's done. It also speaks volumes that, I looked it up, Michael is supposed to be six foot nine. Yeah. And Lance is probably like five four. Right. <laughs> oh, it'd be like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, well when, when he does jump to his death and, and, and Sheriff Breck is like, it's not him. And Tommy goes, are you sure we've never seen him without his mask on? I'm like, you just saw it in the bar. Yeah, you did. You looked directly at it. We saw that. You just saw it. <laughs> it would be like someone being like, oh my god look it's professional wrestler triple h cut like pan over and it's fucking nathan like, <laughs> it, it's like bruce wayne why you dressed as batman yeah i was gonna say well if it's like nicholas cage and mandy it'd be like i could see the resemblance a little sure, bit sure <laughs> sure but yeah no this takes way too long and it's it's you know i get I, it would be fine if this was like one scene i'd get it and i think i think the i think ross bacon's performance is really good it's good i think the the way i think it's really the, the 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 last moments leading up to the jump are really harrowing i think it's really effective it's good for karen's character for sure yeah like, absolutely and i think it is under i think it's undercut by the shot of the gore yeah. yes i do not want that shot nope don't need it yeah. yeah it's like it reminds me of the shot in endgame where after we see like or in infinity war where we see like gamora thrown off the cliff we yeah. see black like black widow fall we yep. don't need to see their them bleeding from their head <laughs> i don't need to see exa i don't need that yeah i don't need it the twitches the yeah it's i mean it, the in fact the effect is incredible yeah. but i don't need it i think it undercuts the sadness of the scene i mean i like the pov with the hands yeah. like, flailing in front of him as he's falling that's great yeah that's that's good yeah but would that scene that's taken so like it, it goes on forever but the, they're chasing them down and stuff yeah since Mally mentioned that we don't know it's Lance until later, that would have been, or th that scene would have been a lot more bearable. Yeah. Yeah. If we didn't, that reveal wasn't so early on. Mally, is the reveal take, like, whenever she's in there and she's trying to talk to him, you see the hand come around the corner and, like, grip the wall. Is that when it's revealed? Because that would be the best moment to reveal. Yes. That is exactly when it is. Oh, see, that makes sense. That makes way more sense. But yeah, my next note is Bracket says, now he's turning us into monsters. And no, he's fucking not. <laughs> that, well, that's that's followed right after uh, Lori says it's all happening. Michael's masterpiece. And I'm like, fucking what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Michael orchestrated all this. Michael's fucking crazy. He's fucking Silva from uh, <laughs> Skyfall. The, the level of delusion, I was going to say, the level of delusion here is like it's Silva and Skyfall. Like, no, it's <laughs> you are all just completely stupid <laughs> he knew that drone was gonna be there <laughs> in so in the script like lance is only like for all these scenes where you know he's like in the hospital running and hiding yeah he's only referred to as a man okay gotcha. and then once karen like finds him it's like revealed like it's Mr. Tavoli, the umbrella patient. Gotcha. I like that. Yeah, I do too. So much better. It just did not. It did not work well in this movie. I remember. I remember talking to Dustin uh, after the movie. I was like, you know what? Because uh, uh, from from last episode, if someone dies, I wanted Karen to die because it just held more weight. I was like, yeah, what? Yeah. I, I, I hope you're fucking happy. By the way, <laughs> holy shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um. I was like, what if the what if Lance. Like when she's like, it's going to be okay. He just comes out and stabs him, yeah. stabs her, kills her right then. I think the problem with that is it would have had a, been a really negative message to say about people with mental illness. Yeah. That's why they don't do it. I guess so. But then that would have been like the the angry mob that's after him. That would have made them think, okay, it is Michael Myers because he just killed or stabbed or wounded Karen somehow. Yeah. It, yeah. But then there's a little legitimate serial killer we need to be concerned about. Right. How do you guys feel about the reveal that Young Hawkins is the reason uh, Loomis didn't put a bullet in the back of Michael's head? Well, he says that in the in 2018. Well, I remember him saying he's he was there that night. I don't remember him saying. Yeah, he, he said he was there that night. Oh, I thought there was a line in 2018 where someone said Hawkins stopped his doctor from putting a bullet in him. Yeah, he did. Wait, really? Oh, I don't remember that. That's when he was hell bent on trying to pancake Michael with the vehicle saying like. Yeah, or maybe I'm thinking of a like another draft of the script or something. But I feel like that's a line in the first movie. Maybe. Oh. you might be right how do you feel about because i do like this is here where he's like 
uh, it's not about you. It it was me that could have prevented things. Well, for uh, for twenty seconds, the movie decides to give us a message about bad cops that mm-hmm. I think it's not interested in actually exploring. Yeah. yeah. Well, here's the thing. I here, I like the idea of it. Of it, I do too. Instinctively, I get it because really, Loomis should have been intervened. Because at this point, Michael's only killed four people, which is a lot, obviously, but right. he should have been apprehended. But also Loomis is a private citizen running around with a gun who's already fired it in a residential area. Just, bla- <laughs> just blasting. <Yeah. laughs> just blasting the gun. Yeah, I agree. Oh, also, something actually that got cut out of that uh, flashback mm-hmm. is an unmasked young Michael. Oh. Ooh. I don't need it. I don't need I it. I don't need it either. Yeah, so... So, like, they knock him down onto his knees. Hawkins puts the handcuffs on the shape's wrist and tears the mask from the shape's head. Pull back to reveal the shape. Angelic, blank face, dark brown eyes, fuzzy hair, but of all, uh, but above all else, expressionless. Huh. Well, I, that kind of makes sense on why Hawkins was like, that monster was somebody's baby. I, yeah. Yeah. Or baby boy. If you could, if he saw his face, you know? Like, we don't... We don't need to, they don't need to show Michael's face necessarily. I agree. Like, you could get a shot of, like, the back of his head. We do see it in the flashback, too. You could get, like, the shot, like, the back of his head and Hawkins seeing his face, but I don't need, like, a full-on shot of Michael's face. But also, like, Hawkins did just accidentally kill his partner. Yeah. And doing all this, and, yeah, the guy's, like, he's a serial killer, yeah, but maybe he doesn't want to... uh, watch another execute like a, or not another but he doesn't want to watch an execution so yeah yeah he stopped loomis yeah no i i mean i get it i buy it the character of hawkins is great for the most part but he also has some really stupid lines like when he says he's a six-year-old boy with the strength of a man dot 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 and the mind of an animal I'm like, what? yeah what <laughs> fucking idiot <laughs> what <laughs> michael myers is a killer shark yeah <laughs> dress a bag <laughs> ass overalls <laughs> i yeah i i don't agree with that uh that hypothesis that like he's has the mind of a child i don't no. i don't buy that no child is that artistic <laughs> <laughs> i don't like when they try to explain michael michael just is yeah. he is a force of evil as loomis always is saying and yeah, he he doesn't have the mind of anything. It's just I think it's just a void. Like he has no thoughts. <laughs> but I, uh, yeah, and I feel like we are done pretending that he's just a guy now, though, right? Like, well, Hank, let's let's talk about that at the end. Yeah, okay. we'll see. Yeah, yeah. How do we feel about the idea? Also, this is where it kind of gets um, explained a little bit about the idea of Michael looking inward instead of outward when he's looking at the window up in the. Of uh, his sister's room, like I, I feel like there's so many scenes in this movie that is just someone like ruminating on, hey, wouldn't this be a cool concept? <laughs> yes. Like instead of like, it's not really uh, explored at all. It's a cool. I, I keep thinking we're about to get a cool idea, and then we don't. Yeah, yeah but why that window? He could do that in, in a fucking mirror. Maybe that's why he was in the in the couple's bathroom. He was trying to find a window. <laughs> he was just looking in the mirror, just trying to find himself. <laughs> and then the lights go on. He's like, turn off those lights. <laughs> It's Michael trying to find out who he is. Yeah, we cut to Michael reading The Secret. (laughs) (laughs) Well, here's the thing. They say that, and then the very next scene is Lonnie saying he wants one thing. He wants to go home. Right. And I'm like, okay, well. But during that line delivery, it showed Karen in the in the hospital looking at one of the windows showing yes. a reflection i was like okay on the nose but all right i was like oh they're going with halloween fours ending <laughs> which i will say if like michael just wants to go home fucking same bro let i him. get it well here's my thing if that's if that's truly what michael wants fucking let him go home just let him go home. just let him go i do think i do think there is an interesting concept here that that people are constantly ascribing some motive to michael and maybe he doesn't actually have one that's what that's my what i'm saying he doesn't have one i do like that but it it does feel like it's a bunch of half-baked ideas well it's all it just it, it kind of speaks to the whole true crime obsession of like mm-hmm. why did this person do it what was their a motivation i'm like sometimes people are just shitty and they just want to kill people judith myers sat there oh my brushing. god Oh, yeah. <laughs> fucking barf but yeah what what if what's the alternate of this they let michael they're like yeah you know what just let him go and they turn it into like a turn it into like a, a local uh landmark yeah and just they do a t- there's tours in Haddonfield. and when they stop on that tour you just see him staring out the window for eternity <laughs> <laughs> and if you look to your left you'll see michael just just staring you got a committee that like <laughs> feeds them and like keeps the power on and running water like... yeah yeah they clean the house up for them and yeah. no 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 they can they can never go in the pound the pound donates dogs <laughs> jesus christ yeah they just donate dogs 
works every once in a while. <laughs> Eddie Izzard had a bit in a stand-up special where she was like, uh, like Pol Pot killed 1.7 million Cambodians and died under house arrest. Like, you know what to do. Like, don't go to that fucking house. Like, <laughs> just stay away from the house. So it, it, this is Lonnie and Cameron and Allison outside in the home. And, you know, we get another another scene just, just completely stupid of, and Allison says, okay, so the key is we stick together. And, and Lonnie goes, no, I'm going in alone. And I'm like, fucking why? Yeah. why? Have we all forgotten what the plan is? Call somebody and say, hey, here's the plan. We're all going to go into the Michael's house. If you see something, say something. Yes. <laughs> And then, of course, I do love that he looks to Cameron and says, I'll see you at the finish line, buddy. I'm like, yeah, you'll both be dead soon. So that's yeah. pretty accurate. <laughs> In five minutes of screen time. Yeah, I don't like I don't like that. They uh, off screen Lonnie. I don't mind the off screen. I don't get how Michael had to to struggle to get Lonnie up in that attic quick because they come right in. He's only working with one hand. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like he was I feel like he was doing that and then he got a ladder out, climbed up, put yeah, him in the he, he he got halfway through it and then he heard them come in. He's like, he's like, oh shit, I gotta hide. And he's like, fuck, I still gotta light this jack-o'-lantern in the closet. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's the part we didn't see is the ladder that he had to throw into another room real quick. So they didn't see. <laughs> <laughs> no, the ladder folds down from the attic. That's what. Yeah. It, and oh, then, oh, that's Dustin. good. Have you never had an attic, Dustin? <laughs> I, 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 yeah, that's true. I've only had apartments. <laughs> no, he's like trying to shove them in there and he, he hears them come in and he's like, oh, shit. OK, let me shut it. And then Lonnie's like head and fingers are sticking out he's like shit and it turns into like a like a he's slam 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 yeah, bit. He's yeah like, like a comedy bit he's trying fuck. to shove them in and he's like all right fuck it maybe they won't notice and he has in the closet <laughs> that is a that is a kane hotter is jason moment i feel yeah. like that's so good <laughs> yes yeah and then cameron comes in the blood drips down he's like oh fuck. yeah i i think michael coming through the door at cameron is great yeah. it's scary as hell yeah again he upped his closet jumping out of speed uh-huh. <laughs> he does he goes whoa he comes at him so quickly yes like a spider monkey yeah. like a spider monkey ah! there's a lot of closets in that house oh no the Myers house has fantastic storage space <laughs> yeah. Cameron's not the greatest character in these movies no he's a bit of a jerk in the last one he does not deserve thank you he does not deserve such yeah. a I mean you and you can tell like just look at him yeah, yeah look at him look yeah, just at look him. at him just look at him <laughs> Well, can I, can I, I wrote down every single thing that happens to him in this death scene. So he gets stabbed twice. Yes. He gets his hand crushed under Michael's boot. He gets his head slammed into the banister four times. Mm, gets yep. impaled on it three times. Yeah. Yeah. And then gets his neck snapped. Like, it's it's rough, dude. And Mally pointed something out to me when we were texting after the movie, and it's like Michael, like Allison gets his attention, but he's like not about to fucking quit. Yeah. He's like, hang on, I'll get to you. Yeah. Let me finish this. No, I I love that. Well, here's I I so wish they would have paid this off. So. I, uh, JT, I don't know what your obsession is with killing off Judy Greer, but <laughs> what's not an obsession? I, I kind of had that feeling with Allison here, because here's here's what I thought was gonna happen. Yeah. Oh God! So Allison falls down the stairs, breaks her leg, or whatever. Which <laughs> anyone breaking their leg will make me fucking wince. Oh yeah. yeah, same. I can't take a leg break. Yeah, I I love that she tries desperately to lure Michael away from Cameron she to does. her, and Michael doesn't fall for it. Yeah, and when. Karen comes in and stabs him with the pitchfork, takes the mask, and then she he's standing in the doorway and she's just giving her speech. <laughs> what would have made sense here is because Karen's trying to do the same thing, lure Michael away from Allison. Is yeah. what if Michael just didn't fall for this shit, closed the door, locked it, oh. and murders Allison? Holy and- shit. Okay, Dustin, once again. Oh no. In the script. Wow. Oh no. <laughs> that like he doesn't kill Allison, but like so. First off, I want to note that this script's um like shit his brains out line mm-hmm. is she goes full fucking mama bear. Oh, I like that. <laughs> I like that. I do too. <laughs> when that's a line when Karen attacks um, Let the boy watch. <laughs> yeah, and then she like grabs his mask and like is like like come get me. You want your fucking mask back, blah blah. And Michael like takes two steps towards her Mm -hmm. stops and just because at this point in the script she's dragged allison out of the house and is she allison is laying in the front yard okay Mm -hmm. michael just stops turns and starts walking towards allison oh and he's about to like get her and that's when uh karen's like uh starts going on about judith and his sister and that's what makes him turn and be as like oh you're talking about my fucking sister now for you see i thought uh, going back to what, like Dustin, I think in my opinion, the reason why 
it worked with when Karen was saying it was because that mask. It, she had the mask. Yeah, so definitely the mask. Yeah. That was important. Now. I think that would have just justified the nihilism, though. Of like, it's funny because Chris was like, he was watching. He's like, wouldn't it be funny if, she, if he just shut the door and killed Allison? I was like, honestly, what a great mic drop moment. Yes, like because Karen, this whole movie is like, he's coming here, he's coming for us, and then she finally decides to get the courage to go after him. And then like that, if that would have just failed, if like she's like, I'm gonna, you know, be like you said, be the mama bear. I'm going right. to protect my daughter. And then, you know, she thought she had this motivation of Michael just needs to get his mask back. It would have hammered home this idea that he doesn't give a fuck about you. He doesn't give a fuck about it. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Or that mask. I agree. And that would have been a hell of a way to end the movie is him just locking the door, murdering Alice. And Karen's trying to beat her way into it. Oof, like, Jesus. Would have been rough. I mean, it would, it's just as dark as the ending we got. Yeah. So why not? We also get another gotcha. We get another gotcha. We yeah, we get two trailer moments back to back, basically. It it doesn't do it for me though, the no. gotcha this time. Me neither. <laughs> I still like it, but it's not nearly as good. Not nearly as good. And it's immediately <laughs> followed by the worst line in the film. Yep. yep. Which is in the context of Sheriff Brackett, that was not a line. It's not like a, a, his catchphrase. It's something yes. in the world of this movie. He just said. He said it to Lori 40 years ago during a casual conversation. It's not memorable. There's he, no reason for him to say it to Michael. Yeah, it's it's so unmemorable that it is in the intro to our Spooky Linings podcast, <laughs> Dustin. Well, I'm talking about in the context <laughs> of the characters. Like, It'd be like if he was like, hey, Michael, remember, I don't like pickles on my burger. Like, like, what? Right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it means nothing. I, I mean, I get it. I don't like pickles. I don't either, but it, it it means nothing. Yeah. Oh no. I'm not I'm not defending that line. It's fucking terrible. Like, what if Tommy just turned to him and was like, what? <laughs> what if he brings up the theft charges from when he stole the mask from the hardware store? <laughs> hey, you you stole that rope and those knives. I still have the receipts. Like, if he had said something like if he had said something like this is for Annie or something like that, sure. Yeah, sure. I made a B on my math test. <laughs> what? That's ba it's basically the equivalent. Or what if, if he would have been like speed kills, it'd be the <laughs> same thing. It means nothing. I would say one of the, uh, this is also the one of the coolest scenes to me is when after the lights come on, the mob surrounded him. She uh Karen says her gotcha line. Yeah. He looks around. And instead of defending himself or getting ready to, he just says, fuck y'all. And he just picks up his mask and puts it on. Mm -hmm. And then the best fucking music yeah. cue of all goddamn time. It's oh, so good. God, it's yes. so good. I This is what I wanted from the movie, though, was the scene of people beating him down. Yeah. Yeah. I, I thought this was rad, except for the one lady with the fucking iron. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was, and the guy with the cricket bat? They, they would not have a cricket bat in fucking Illinois. No one's playing cricket in that fucking town. And also it's this fucking Illinois you gotta know what a crumpet is to understand cricket this is a this is a small midwestern town all of them should have had AR-15 where's all the guns <laughs> where are the guns <laughs> well two people had guns but you wouldn't have known that well the guy that tries to walk right up to him and blast him <laughs> yeah I love it because Michael slashes his wrist and he's like ah <laughs> which I mean that's that is on that dude that yeah. is on that dude <laughs> yeah that's on him shoot him from like shoot him from five feet away it's fine <laughs> I feel like after he got cut and he's like holding his wrist again, it's like, well, fuck, that's fair. And then he just started blasting him because he like he pulls his yeah he pulls his wrist together. He's like, all right, hold on, switching hands. Like, yeah. <laughs> this is also on Karen too because twice in this ending scenes here, once in the house and once here, she has the opportunity to land a killing blow. Yep. She stabs it with the pitchfork and then just drops it. I'm like, nope, keep fucking going. Yeah. While he's on the ground, Tommy they Tommy stops and he's like. Go be with your go be with your daughter. Like, yeah, we got this. This isn't a thing for ladies. There's a that's that's when Chris was like, there's a guy with a gun. Yeah, there right now, present, loaded. I wrote down, go full Rob Schneider on his ass, cut his fucking head off, <laughs> cut his fucking like, head off. That, like she stabs him once in the back, and I'm like, no, yeah, no. You he you saw all the shit he survived up to this point. Yeah, yeah. cut What's, his fucking head off. <laughs> What's funny is after the lights cut on with the mob scene, I told Chris, I was like, be warned. I want you to pay attention to everything after this. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And it's all shit. Before before we recap all that, I just want to say one last thing i mentioned the legacy characters getting throw like throwaway deaths yeah sheriff bracket same thing tommy here same thing uh -huh. i mean even lonnie's death is off screen i just i don't know i find it kind of disrespectful to 
bring the original actors back and like for both Lindsay or you know and, and just do nothing with them yeah it, it feels cruel to me yeah it feels like they put fanfare and cannon fodder in the same thing and was just like yeah oh, that'll yes. work yes yeah from here from here on out though the like this is where the movie truly fell apart for me because the editing is the worst in the, the film is baffling it's terrible from the part where they tell allison to go the worst editing i've seen in a film oh from karen from yes. Karen to go. yes it is the worst editing i've seen yeah it's wild it's awful i i like here's the thing i like i kind of like the close-up shots because it makes it kind of claustrophobic and stuff but the soft fade ins and outs it's like it's a montage of just he pull he, he picks up a guy's leg so that he can slice his achilles tendon in yep. midair yep. what is that what is that don't know <laughs> he's getting scampy with it <laughs> he was trying to kick michael and he just caught his leg and oh that's... okay so michael knows martial arts now cool <laughs> <laughs> well he would you know he was trying he's like nope i faced busta once i know this trick <laughs> <laughs> i've watched plenty of bruce lee movies since we're here why don't you recap exactly what happens at the end of this movie so paul rudd lays down some runes uh -huh. <laughs> yeah the power of the runes stopped him uh so karen and allison are sitting on the front porch realizing that michael will never be stopped he's always going to be with us even when he's not there which i do like that mm -hmm. I, I like that too that that's they bring back that line from earlier when they were talking about ray i thought they were referring to ray yeah in the first time they are talking about ray but that yes. last time it's about michael i think yeah uh Lori has some weird speech about how Michael is actually the hate inside of all of us. And every time he kills, he gets more powerful. Ugh. And that is the curse of Michael. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it's all a bunch of half ideas that don't connect to each other in one line. Uh, and then Karen looks up at the window at, at, at Judith's window and sees young Michael Myers, a vision of him for some reason. And I thought we were about to get Halloween four again. Uh -huh. Yeah, I did, too. And so she walks upstairs, stands uh, at Judith's window, takes a deep breath. And Michael comes out of the shadows and stabs her a bunch of times. In a shot for shot recreation of Psycho. Yes. Yeah, it really felt like it. Yeah. She also follows a trail of blood sure. mysteriously just on the stairs and the doorway. She looks down right at it. She's like, oh, there's a lot of blood in there. It, who knows? But meanwhile, Michael, who is a couple blocks over, just got the shit beat out of him, shot a bunch of times. Uh -huh. During the whole, every time he kills, he, he ascends. He ascends. <laughs> and stands up and just, of course, all the close-up shot murders everybody in the circle. Everybody. And then, yeah, somehow magically teleports into the bedroom so glad i'm doing this recap <laughs> no because i wanted we want i want to talk about how the fuck did he get in the fucking bedroom no i know i'm fucking with you <laughs> well and here's my issue uh -huh. in the script karen at the house is not intercut with michael killing the mob mm -hmm. which makes more sense yes. yes and also when she gets back to allison so she gets back to the house Allison's gone oh. like there's no one there and then she hears mom and it like she looks over and like the neighbors across the street are like helping Allison like on their front porch mm -hmm. oh so it's less like she somehow got through all of the first responders <laughs> there's none of that oh my god that makes so much more sense yeah yeah and then as Karen is crossing the street, she kind of like looks behind her and she sees something that looks like a child in the window. It doesn't explicitly say it's a child in the window, but it resembles huh. a child in the window. Okay. okay. And that's when she's like, she kind of like walks back to the house and Allison's like, mom. And she's like, hang, like she kind of, it literally in the script states, she kind of gives her the, like the one second, uh -huh. like the hold, hold on a second. Why? And that's when Allison goes upstairs and she gets killed. Karen. It, it is explicitly after the mob beat down and not surrounded by cops and ambulances. <sighs> yeah, that makes so much more sense. Uh, that makes so much more sense. We talked about this after like we had all seen the movie and I posed this question to, to Nathan and, uh, and to Mally and I don't think we ever came to a consensus on it. But my understanding now is they are pretty much putting their um, uh, their foot on the scale of Michael is supernatural. I Yeah. I mean, what else could it be? Yeah, I don't. I saw an interview and with David Gordon Green, he was like, he's like, he no, is he, su is he supernatural? No, he's mm. but can he do some crazy things? And I'm like, you have no way to defend yourself. That's supernatural. Like somehow he could take a lot of punishment. He's super strong. And I'm like, no, dude, like. 
they got shot and beat like no he got shot six times point blank stabbed in the back multiple times he was shot six times yeah and I, I, I there's the obvious question of how did he even get into the house with all the cops and everything there yes yeah. what are they what what are they trying to say with karen's death and like her seeing the young michael up in the window i don't right i feel like there's a point they're trying to make and i don't understand michael's her dad <laughs> here's what david gordon green said uh according to collider.com i believe he is flesh and blood but i believe the interpretation of what michael myers has become is cosmic I think Michael Myers in our true earth has brought nightmares to millions of people. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> I mean, I agree with him that, yes, Michael should be flesh and blood, but that the the urban legend of Michael should be... That he's impossible to kill. Yes. Like, he's supernatural. But he should not be physically supernatural. I agree. Oh, it's like the storyline from, like, Freddy and Freddy versus Jason. Right. No one, as long as people are scared of him, he can just teleport and do whatever the fuck he wants. I guess. And here's the thing. This, this the worst thing for this movie is that Halloween Kills suffered because during the pandemic, they decided to completely rewrite Halloween Ends mm -hmm. right. after this movie was already shot. Mm. So they pretty much had to go back and re-edit this film so that it would make sense with Halloween Ends. Mm -hmm. That's not boding well for me. I'm going to read the original ending. Okay. okay. So this, I'm going to start right after Karen's killed. Pan to reveal Karen is dead, eerily lying in the exact same spot that Judith Myers died in. And that's where this theatrical movie ends mm -hmm. with that shot of Michael. It goes on. Karen's phone rings. The shape reaches down, raises the phone to his ear. Lori stands by a hospital telephone. Karen, hello? Nothing is heard from the other end of the line. Lori takes a beat. Karen. Then, breathing. The shape stands. He holds Karen's phone up to his ear, listening. Lori's face says it all. Dread. All we hear is the shape's breathing. Michael. The breathing continues. Lori lowers the phone, resting her head against the wall. She takes a moment before raising the phone back to her face. Tears build in her eyes. Rage builds. Run. Run as far as you possibly can. I'm coming for you. I'm never going to stop coming for you until I put you in the ground and send you back to hell. Lori drops the phone. It clatters and bounces against the concrete wall. She walks off, disappearing into the bustling crowd ahead. I like, I like it. it. The it's not done. It's oh. not done. Oh. The crowd is large. After a moment, Lori emerges from the crowd, walking towards us. A look of determination like never before on her face. Pan down to reveal the bloody knife. Ugh. Allison left with Lori. We gain on it. Freeze frame on the knife. End. Oh, like the first one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that shot is literally in the trailer. Yeah. Well, they and they chose not to do that because they want to do a time jump. Yes, that was the big thing with the rewrite. Is that originally all three films were going to take place on the same night? Wow, I would have loved that. I don't know how they're going to pull off a time jump. Like, I don't understand the time jump at all. No, I I feel like it's going to reduce so much of the tension. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. I don't know. I just. I don't again, I don't understand what they're trying to say with Karen's death because they're trying to make some kind of connection here with with young Michael and looking out the window. Mm -hmm. But they I think it's much less of a jaw dropping moment when Karen dies than what they probably intended. I feel like they're going to like we got him with this. Like when we kill Karen, it's going to the whole theater is going to be uproarious. And yeah. in my theater, no one gave a shit. Yeah, no, like you, you see a main character going up the stairs of by herself it's a horror movie at the end of the day like we all know what's about to happen yeah yeah they're not setting i, I feel like it's not a surprise that they think it is yeah, yeah exactly no. and i i know you guys have issues with me saying this because we talked about it before but mm. i've also been shown in the last movie a character that was clearly dead that they brought <laughs> back for this one and that was hawkins i've thought the same thing i have no reason to believe that karen is dead i think based mm. on the rules of these movies. I'm, I'm sure she is i think karen's fucking because we actually see her get stabbed much more than hawkins i think she i'm sure she is a lot fucking more and we also see karen's face afterwards we do not see hawkins face after he gets stabbed and i think showing the dead eyes is a big thing i'm just saying and michael does ask hey you dead and she doesn't <laughs> say anything yeah that's true he does yeah she does not respond to his questions yeah. Yeah. guys that weird little uh shot the rotating shot of michael and tommy when he stabs tommy mm -hmm. did anybody else think that they were about to have michael speak for the first time i got a little bit of yeah i, I got a little feeling like there you know. yeah i didn't think that i didn't think they were gonna 
get any talking. No, I I never thought that. Well, he did. He does kind of like lean into him, like yeah. he's about to say something. So he should have smooched him. <laughs> just, <laughs> just gave him a little. <laughs> what if he just like leaned forward real close and was like, bitch, bitch. <laughs> like just calls Tommy a bitch. Nobody believes me. Like that would be fucking. Hearing Michael Myers just call someone a bitch yeah. would be fucking amazing. You're an amateur. <laughs> or even better, before he beats him to death with his own bat, he looks at him and he says, you're fucking out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking in. <laughs> Dustin, do your magic, sir. I, <laughs> Halloween kills on the reg. Stabbing on the reg. <laughs> I don't know if it was in the script you have, Mally, but I did read an article. I think it was on um, maybe Screen Ranch or something else, but apparently they were considering having a part for Busta Rhymes and for Daniel Harris in this movie. They reached out to Busta Rhymes at one point. Yeah, yeah. that is absolutely not in the script. I mean, Busta Rhymes is not mentioned once in this script. I have no idea what that would look like. <laughs> there's not a there's not a line in the script where it's like, think a Busta Rhymes type. Yeah, I will say I don't think like I don't think I don't need the I don't want those cameos like that sure no I'm actually glad that I think it would have been distracting to have Paul Rudd as Tommy Doyle yeah, even though like, they wanted yeah it was distracting to have Brackett and Marion in this yeah. movie for me well see at least with the people they brought back in this one it's from the movies that exist they are following yeah like sure. those characters were in the original Halloween that's fair bringing back Danielle Harris and Busta Rhymes Tyra Banks we don't know mm -hmm. and also I almost don't want Danielle Harris to come back on principle because uh -huh. she sucks wow <laughs> wow I like Danielle Harris a lot I I I follow I like her in like Halloween four and five and stuff, but she has just gotten very very petty. Oh, she does talk a lot of shit about these movies for sure. Well, they did put her through some shit though. I was gonna say as we talked about before, they put her through some shit. <laughs> they did, but she also talks so much shit. Like she talks shit on Halloween twenty eighteen. It's like uh okay yeah okay that was a good fucking movie. Calm down. What if? At the end of the movie, the mob, you know, the, Michael stands back up, kills Brackett, and Tommy is staring, you know, terrified. And we hear Daniel Harris say, on your left. <laughs> she comes out of a portal. Okay, hang on. All right. The, hang on. The music's swelling. I'm here for it. Uh -huh. <laughs> and then she gives a little nod to, to, to Lori and Karen and all that. Right, yeah. right. Then Paul Rudd comes out. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Wynn comes out. Holding his VR. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Looking into hell. <laughs> then you hear, I will skull fuck you, Michael. And William Forsythe no. comes out. <laughs> and Buster Rhymes comes out and looks to Paul Rudd and says, is this everybody? He's, no, that's not everybody. Then you hear this stupid squeaky clown music. It's the two cops from Halloween 5. <laughs> Sherry Moon Zombie rides out on a white horse. Yes. <laughs> what, what would it save this movie for me? is whenever they're having the brutal the brutal beatdown of Michael is yeah. like shielded by the headlights you know they're kind of silhouetted until they get into frame mm -hmm. blinded by the light it's fucking Tom Atkins oh, oh my god Jesus and he gets out and he yells shut it down yeah he's like stop it stop it stop it <laughs> <laughs> that lady has an iron <laughs> the fucking uh <laughs> the teleport like the Thanos the Space stoned. <laughs> what? The, sorry, sorry, sorry. The space stone clouds happen, and then other Michael Myers from the other movies walk out as well. Oh, oh sure. Yeah. I could see that happening at Ed's. I'd be into that. God damn. Fuck it at this point. Why not? Just like the surprised one from fucking Halloween 4 or no, Halloween 5. <laughs> Who, me? <laughs> <laughs> He's looking around like, where am I? Fucking peanut butter neck from 6. <laughs> There's one with no head just like stumbling around. <laughs> That's just the pyramid. Yeah. He's back for some reason. The crispy one from the end of Resurrection. Yes. <laughs> yeah. And him and him and him and Halloween kills me. Michael just kind of like, oh yeah, hey, same, nice. Oh, nice look. It's good. It's good look, bro. We're we're already over two hours. Let's get through this last bit quick, sure. so we're not at another three hour mark. But let's talk about prop cop. Uh, for new listeners, that's simply where we just look at all the different props throughout the movie and we fantasy cast which one we want to own for ourselves. Uh, Mally, this is your pick. I'll let you go first. The cheese knife. The cheese <laughs> knife, right? On. That's just utilitarian right there. Yeah, I honestly, I don't have a good cheese knife. Okay. Yeah. Um, that would come in so handy for me. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. Um, JT, what about you? Um, I'm going to go with the uh, the fire rescue tool 
what do you call it? The halogen bar or whatever it's called? Yeah. 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 I'll, have, I'll take the halogen bar. That's good. That's good, Nathan. There's one of those in my parents' house. Mine is what? <laughs> <laughs> Let me get it. Mine. Uh, I, I also want Mally's parents' halogen <laughs> bar. No. Um, my dad was a firefighter. <laughs> <laughs> I also choose this guy's dead wife. <laughs> Damn it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I i no i i want uh i want the charcuterie board that looked delicious all right so you and mally have got it going right oh my <laughs> oh me and nathan about to have a night we're doing it up big john we're Little doing john. it up <laughs> just to be clear i'm big john okay that's fine Lil john gets that seems that seems right i love Lil john's outfit so it's all good yeah yeah i just assume that's what you wear every time we record it sure <laughs> is <laughs> I was going to go with the uh, old Huckleberry, the, yeah. the baseball bat, but the bar owners already had one white guy steal that from him. He doesn't need a second one. No <laughs> kidding. So I'm, I'm just going to go with, I, I mentioned it. I was going to say I like the outfit with the, the um, Hannonfield Memorial Hospital on it. Nice. Oh. There you go. So I like that. I won't. I just I, I rarely pick wardrobe, but that's what I'm gonna go with. I had I had some backups. Oh please. I was gonna get uh Sandra's drone. Mm -hmm. That thing is smashed as fuck, bro. Mm -hmm. And then I, <laughs> I this is redundant, but the new OG mask. I'd really want that. Oh, oh sure. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It looks so good. Um, what about bit part where we uh, replace one of the uh, extras in this movie with ourselves? JT, oh, yes. go ahead. This is new. Someone else go. I uh, I would. It's not. It's uh, not new I would... at all. <laughs> it's new to me. You did this last time. Go did ahead. I? Okay, go ahead. I would love to play. I want to be the mime that's chanting "Evil dies tonight." <laughs> in the I right knew on. you were gonna fucking pick that guy. <laughs> it was that or the dude in the Teen Wolf costume who I clocked this time. The one who's like asking about his brother. That's mm -hmm. fair. Uh, Mally? I mean, I have to reprise my role from 2018. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Run me my motherfucking sag check, baby. <laughs> I'm Tavoli. Sure. There you go. I really wanted to go with the, the fireman that tries to stop Michael with the hose. <laughs> <laughs> but, but ultimately, I went with... We, this is kind of uh, serendipitous because we talked about tigers last episode. Oh, but no. There's a guy in a tiger suit, and we talked about him earlier. He's the guy that tries to shoot Michael close up, oh, gets yeah. his wrist slashed, <laughs> shoots Michael six times, and then to finish him off, realizes he's out of the bullets, and I get stabbed in the throat. So. That's good. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. That's who I'm going with. Okay, I'll I'll go with the uh, really shitty cop from the flashback. The one that gets shot in the neck? <laughs> no, 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 God, no. The one that told the kids that <laughs> To go home and oh, just oh. <laughs> fucking oh, yeah, go home. <laughs> fucking Smokey and the Bandit and peels the there. fuck out. Yeah, that's a great choice. That's like a uh, Kung Pao joke. It's like you guys go after Michael, I'll go home. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um. All right. Well, real real quickly before we get to silver linings, I want to know what's the best kill of the movie. We always do this with horror movies. For me, it's it's Vanessa shooting herself in the face. <laughs> God damn it! That's, that's definitely what I wrote down. <laughs> It's a kill in the movie, but it's not by Michael, so it's right. Not in, not intentional. Not into not directly by him, but uh, all right. JT, what about you? Oh God! Well, I, it's between Cameron and Big John. Oh okay. yeah, just because it, it, it that was a little bit more in detail. Big John's is intense. Big John's rough, but also Sandra, I think, had it the worst. Yeah, having to watch yeah her husband get stabbed. And anyways, yeah. Um. Okay, Mally. I mean, <laughs> it's fucking. Can't, what was that? <laughs> Just a little giggle. I'm that guy running around the corner in the uh, in the hospital. <laughs> uh, I mean, I gotta give it to Cameron. Yeah. yeah. Fuck. Cameron's is rough. Michael had a vendetta against that kid. For sure. Yeah. Well, uh, since you guys took the literally the three that I wrote down, I'm gonna go with uh the the old woman getting the fluorescent tube to the neck Ooh, and uh, then having to watch her husband get finished off it's wild so fucked up it's it's rough because i think she i think cameron cameron went through a lot more physically yeah she went through a lot more she went through a lot emotionally <laughs> yeah yeah all right well uh let's get into it several linings who would like to go first uh, I can go. Okay. Allison has a new perspective on this whole Michael Vendetta. Yeah. Like, it's it's not... She knows that it's not a personal thing, but she also knows that, like, he has to be stopped. Mm-hmm. Wait, are you talking about... You mean Lori? Allison. I don't think... I still... I still feel like Lori doesn't fucking get the message at the end of this movie. Lori does not get it at all. That's fair. She still doesn't get it, for sure. I agree. I... 
wrote down, uh, because we disproved JT, uh, JT's assured certainty that Julian's parents are not, in fact, the doctor and nurse. Oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. We know that he is not an orphan by the end of this movie. Bless. That's good, good for him. I mean, he could... He, he could be an orphan. We don't know. We don't ever see his parents, really. <laughs> He's just taken care of by, like, a, like babies, different babysitters every night. Yeah. <laughs> Julian survived, and his parents are still alive, as far as we know. See, damn it. I, Is that what you had? Yeah, because I was... I'm, Literally thinking of the silver linings. And well, I had the one that I thought you were going to go with, which is why I went with that one. But, Mally, what did you have? More children died in this one. Um, <laughs> boy. No, that's not my actual one. Um, but slightly related, babysitters made it out of this Halloween film pretty clean. That's yeah. true. It's a good night for babysitters. Yeah. Not a single baby. Yeah. yeah. Not a single babysitter died. Well, here's here's the big one that I thought you were going to go with, uh, JT, is that uh, Lindsay survived an encounter with Michael Myers. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Twice. She even got a few licks in on him, too. Yeah. Hit him with the brick. Yeah. But, I mean, we don't know how banged up she is. I... Speaking of uh, Danny McBride, she socked him with the brick. <laughs> <laughs> she just, I mean, Lindsay just need a shower and she good. Yeah. All right. Well, what about a pick me up movie alternative, a.k.a. the double feature mm. um, for new listeners? This is where we pair the movie we're watching this week, Halloween Kills, with a double feature um, to balance things out. Something a little more lighthearted and upbeat. Mm. Um, who would like to go first? Mally, how about you? OK, um, you know, Judy Greer, sadly, her character is murdered in this film. So I am going to go. If you want a little more Judy Greer, I'm going to go with the 1999 film Jawbreaker. Oh, Ooh. fuck yes. I love Jawbreaker. Yeah. Good movie. Great movie. Uh, Nathan? Uh, if you enjoyed watching Anthony Michael Hall being super aggro and a mob chasing after someone who's innocent, uh, 1990s Edward Scissorhands. Oh, oh that's nice. a great alternative. That's, that's good. That's good. I thought you were going to go with the USA production of The Dead Zone. <laughs> <laughs> I talked enough about that last uh, a couple weeks ago <laughs> yeah <laughs> i'm sure you did well fuck what you heard it's still a great movie and laurie actually gets to do some shit in that movie uh halloween 2 from 1981 wow. oh, yeah. i don't care it's still a great fucking movie i dig it, Is it? plus she makes it out of life yes it's still a great movie i have some issues with the story but i i, I dig halloween too it, it's not a perfect movie it's definitely got some flaws but it is still an enjoyable movie well shit since we're going off the trend of uh actor other actors uh mm -hmm. if you like will Patton, mm -hmm. i do uh i don't know uh, armageddon Hell yeah, Arm yeah. Uh, <laughs> armageddon remember the remember the titans or or the movie that mally and i have been talking about all season gone in 60 seconds hell oh, yeah okay there you go or i would also recommend there's uh anthony michael hall is in a couple of episodes of community where yes, he plays he a bully yes he and is. he has he says the this incredible line is my fist up your balls <laughs> and i believe he has a mustache does he not he does and he staples something to his face yeah <laughs> It's so good. Well, last last question here. Uh, oh, um, he was in the Punisher. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, he's in the Thomas Jane Punisher. Yeah, I forgot about that. Do we recommend Halloween Kills? Uh, I mean, uh, do, do we? That that's about right. <laughs> well, let's 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 start with Mally because he actually likes this movie more than we do. If you're a completionist, you kind of have to. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, like I don't. It's hard to say. It's hard for me to say. Don't watch this particular Halloween. Like, right. Fuck it. Watch every Halloween film. That's that's so true. Because I love this series, even when it's dumb. And also, I am very curious to see a director's cut of this. Yeah. Because mm. they have said the original ending will be released. Oh, interesting. Yeah, it's coming. He said that. While it was still in theaters, he's like, the Blu-ray is going to have the ending. Interesting. Yeah, he said it the day it came out. Yes. <laughs> Very bizarre. I think it'll be easier for me to recommend this once I see how it all ends. You know and, what I mean? Yeah. It ends, yeah. Oh, so when Halloween ends? Yeah. When, when Halloween ends. <laughs> got it. And I also think, I mean, I, like, Mally, that's a great point. Like, I, I love this series, and I think there's a Halloween for everybody out yeah, there. Like, I... I mean, I, I recommend watching the director or the producer's cut of Halloween 6, and that movie is hot garbage, mm -hmm. and I still love it. Yeah. But there's a little Halloween in all of us. There's a little Halloween in all of us. Yeah. <laughs> there's a little John in all of us. A, John. <laughs> a big John. You know, it's, you know, for one Halloween movie, it might be a little John. That's true. <laughs> Another Halloween movie might be your big John. You just have to watch him and find out. That's mm -hmm. right. Um, here's what I'll say. As it stands right now, I don't recommend it. Mm -hmm. However, the more I watch it, the more the less I hate it, like the more I find to enjoy in it. I did like it more on a second viewing. Yeah. See, and that's why this movie is not like The Last Jedi, because the more I watch that, the more I fucking hate it. <laughs> 
Well, here's what I'll say too is when you when you search for this movie in IMDb, the second result is a movie called Halloween Pussy Trap Kill Kill. <laughs> <laughs> and I think I I think I'd rather watch that. <laughs> and I've never seen it. Can we uh, are we are we gonna roll the trailer? Are we got a clip for this. <laughs> Taking shape did not mention that unproduced screenplay. So look, Halloween kills. I'm not lying. Halloween pussy trap kill kill. Mm -hmm. Wow. Starring Richard Grieco. <laughs> oh my god. I was thinking 70s. This was recent. No, this was like three years ago. <laughs> Late 2017. That is a recent film. Huh. But yeah, th the one saving grace I'll say is I have no idea where they're going with the story. True. In terms of ends. Yeah. And I'm kind of excited about that, but I, it's hard to be knowing how this movie ends. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's It's a weird position I'm in. I feel like so. I hope it doesn't Rise of Skywalker me where I saw I hated Last Jedi so much and I saw the trailer for Rise and was like, okay, I, I liked this trailer. Uh -huh. Like the trailer gave me that like Star Wars feeling again. Mm -hmm. And then, oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> yeah, that movie is rough. Did that movie ruin a childhood? <laughs> well, um... Listener, if you disagree, or if you do agree with us and you, th you want to get your uh, feedback in on Halloween Kills, you can do so by emailing us at the playlist at gmail.com yeah. or DM us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Um, you can also subscribe if you haven't already. We ask that you leave us a rating and some feedback. Tell your friends and family about us and let more people know about the show. Mm -hmm. um, you can also follow us on the aforementioned social media platforms, as well as visit our subreddit at reddit.com slash r slash playlist. We've only got a few more episodes left this season, and Nathan, you have a clue for what we're talking about next week. Yeah, I do. Oh, this is so exciting. I don't know what it is. We, yes, you do. <laughs> do I? <laughs> we just talked about it like two hours before we hit record. But go ahead, Nathan. Maybe the clue will help out. Maybe it will. Uh, I think if you like this movie, then you might be something of a scientist yourself. <laughs> Uh, I'm ready uh, for next week's movie. <laughs> uh, I had to, I had to beat an old lady with a stick to watch this movie. <laughs> um, who picked the movie out next week for us, Nathan? Your husband? <laughs> that that line, uh, we'll get into it for sure. Yeah, doesn't hold up very well. <laughs> Not at all. Whew. Well, anything else we want to say before we get out of here? Uh, evil dies tonight. Evil dies tonight. Yeah. Big if true. Big if true. Uh, yeah, it's not true, by the way. Um, <laughs> evil gets gets the shit beat out of him. <laughs> right? For about 14 seconds. Yeah. And then none of it matters. Uh, rest in peace, Oatmeal. And Donald Pleasant. Pleasant. And Eddie Murphy. And Eddie Murphy. I forgot about him, too. <laughs> <laughs> and, and as always... Evil dies tonight. Do your own research. <laughs> Do, Do your, your own, own research. research. <laughs> Do your own research. <laughs> Excelsior. 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 Oh. Look it up. Jesus Christ, that was a long one. Uh, anyway, if you're still here, thanks for listening. And remember, you can always check out our back catalog for over 100 episodes of the show. Like, subscribe, and leave feedback if you want. And tune in next week for another one. Laters!